painters? Good. <laughs> okay. Can we get her? No, no, can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Kane Ishibashi from Keio University. I'll introduce myself in detail in a bit, but I would like to welcome you all. And yes, yeah, we are selecting you, okay, at the end of the day. But let's try to have fun, okay? This is about it. Um, I will have one of your, one of yours, uh, who came to Keio University last year to talk about her experience, and so that you have more better idea what we're doing and we're, what our purposes are. Uh, but for this workshop, uh, we are looking for somebody to come to our program in 2016 in September in Japan. Okay, who have been in Japan? Before? Okay, you you will not be selected. <laughs> no, but yes, I I not expecting you to speak any Japanese or if you speak English in whatever your language you speak, that's fine. Okay, and we're not looking for any fluent language speaker. We're looking for somebody who is creative, smart. And fun, okay. And we're looking for potential global entrepreneurs who can actually initiate the innovation. Not right now, but in the near future. So that's what we're looking for. And to to find that out, I want to see you smiling today, okay? I don't want frown faces. I don't want smart ass showing whatever ability you have. But I want somebody who can collaborate and who can um, actually facilitate. The, the creativity and then the, the team spirit, okay? So that's something we're looking for. And um, so this is the timeline for today. Um, so maybe, Anai, do you have any more to tell to the students? You probably do, right? Yeah. No? How much time? <laughs> well, I'll give you, yeah, I, have, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. So I'll have Anai to, okay, yeah. before you go. So I have an eye to give you some brief outline, what we've been doing, how it was last year. And um, he came to us in KO and gave a, a great speech about the program here. And um, not only Ahmedabad University and us, but we all ha also have Chulalongkorn University from Thailand, that's a prestigious university in Thailand. We have uh, Malaya University from Malaysia. We have Institute of Technology, Bandung, uh, from Indonesia. That's our allies. That they're friends. Um, so, well, I'm going to briefly talk about that too. And then after and I, uh, Professor Yoki will introduce himself and we'll introduce you to Keio University, where we're from, and a graduate school is System Design and Management, where we are, and the, the Keio Edge program. We'll, he'll talk about that. And after that, um, I'll give an introduction lecture for a Keio Edge program, um, and then the, the innovative thinking. And we'll have probably a QA. And then we have a lunch break, and after that, here comes a workshop. We call it demo workshops because uh, this is like a, a small segment out of the, the real KO Edge program. And so it's not in a complete set. So you may feel, hey, I'm missing a few things. But um, allow us, uh, because it's a, it's a demo workshop so that we, we can you know, give you some sense of what we do. Okay? And at the end, we'll have some time to Q&A. And I'm hoping to be on time. But last year we had a lot of discussion, a lot of questions, a lot of, a lot of things. So we went a little past uh, five. If you really need to go, it's okay. You can go, and I don't. It, it doesn't affect you or anything on your or uh, when we're uh, judging um, the performance. So if you need to go, it's okay if you go because we already announced you to. It, it'll be until five, I guess five. Yeah. So this is our schedule today, and before I go, I'll um, ask a nice essay to. So, thanks, Prof. We, we, we know what Amber University has its founding pillars. One of them happens to be entrepreneurship. One of them happens to be design thinking. One of them happens to be innovation. One of them happens to be project based on And uh, our interaction with them started with the only word that can explain this serendipity. Because we didn't know them, they did not know us. But then, if you, if you ask me about their, their, their understanding, their, their school system design management, philosophy, it's the same as ours. I mean, uh, the more I discussed with Kim Sensei, we found out that we are like long lost brothers. 
in many ways, I do the same thing over here and he's doing very similar things at his end and just started growing. So, uh, and my experience in Japan, as most of us are Gujaratis, feel that food is going to be a problem. <laughs> Trust me, that's not. <laughs> I stayed over there for one week and did not have any thetla that I took, took back to took from me. All of the stuff I gave to Ishani, and she did not have any food or any, any Indian Gujarati food for three months. Okay, so we can survive. <laughs> More than survive. And so that's and that's the major concern for, me, for people who are here. So that's one. It it was a true sincere learning experience. You get a, a amazing exposure to technology, amazing exposure to thinking abilities. Uh, they'll talk about it, Ishan will talk about our three months experience. Uh, the thing is that we are very good at implementation and, and getting into a tip of it, but we are not that good at being getting out with your ideas, getting out with something that is innovative. And that's where these guys are, legends. Okay. So, somebody who has been part of our system, very exposed to their system, is Ethan. He is a weapon. Right. So, that's what it is. Right. Uh, we, we, we're talking a lot about lot many opportunities to discuss and let's see what the future holds for us. Uh, but and this is a government of Japan funded project where they'll be selecting one person who's going to represent India. Not Ahmedabad University, not Ahmedabad, not Kuzhar, India. Last year they had uh, people from 11 countries. Yeah. And four of them were selected, others came and came. So, please understand that the stakes are high and uh, prove yourself right now and whosoever gets selected from this room, prove yourself there as well because there is a lot of things that are on your shoulders and right? you are going to be viewed from various angles. Best of luck to all of you. Yeah. Make, make us proud. Yeah. Alright, thank you. So, now you are pumped up. <laughs> Go get this okay. So, I'll have... Um, this is our, uh, you know, this is the email we actually sent them um, last year and then this year as well. So we would like to host um, an innovative thinking workshop where you are today to demonstrate to the students who might be interested in joining the KOS program. So that's my that's our intention. And among the students who participated in this workshop, would like to recruit some candidates for prospective students for 2016 fall KOS program. So and among these candidates, we would like to conduct an interview and then select one invited student, okay? So, um, at the end of today, um, we, we will send out emails to some of you, not all of you, okay? Some of you, and asking to come in for interview tomorrow, okay? And the, and the email, I'll, I'll tell you this later on today, but at, on the email, I'll say um, the time, when to come, all right? So tomorrow up here, maybe on the first floor, uh, we will have, um, short interview, 20 minutes, or less than 30 minutes, um, asking you a few things, okay? And then at the, um, probably end of, end of this month, maybe? Uh, we will, maybe about in a month, I will send those who interviewed an email that you've been selected or not, okay? It's gonna take a while because this is the first um, place that we're visiting. We're calling it a world tour. Starting from India, Ahmedabad. And next, where are we going? We're going Malaysia. Malaysia. Malaya University. Malaya University. That's uh, a week from today, almost. Yes. And then uh, a couple weeks from that, we're going to uh, Indonesia. Indonesia, ITB, Institute of uh, Technology, Bandung. And then at the end, we're going to Thailand. So we'll try to set the, the same criteria for all the countries and we would like to have the, the same standard. So it may take a little time for us to, who to pick, but uh, we'll, uh, we will send out an email about it in a, in a month, okay? So here how it goes. So you just enjoy today, and we'll send you emails so, so those who we interview tomorrow, and then you come to the interview, maybe three or four, but call, or we, I don't know if you're all we, it seems to be qualifying, we'll interview all of you, okay? But 
Yeah. To be realistic, we'll probably do four or five. Okay. And and after that, we'll select one uh, invited student. And then if you're invited, the travel fare, tuition, housing will be covered. Okay. So um, it's going to be um, an experience, but no academic credit, but it's going to be a great experience for you about three months in Japan. So this is the you know the purpose of our visit, and this is what we're aiming. This is what you're aiming. Okay. So and before we get started with the Yoko Sensei, uh, this is the, the material download URL. So I'll, I'll put it up later on today. So don't worry about taking notes on every slide. I will give you all the slides, PDF online. So you can use this. And um, if you wanna, you know, take take memos, whatever. We're speaking. Um, you can do that, but you don't have to write down everything that I show. Okay. Okay. So. So good morning everybody. Good morning. I really appreciate you. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate to join this workshop. This is a great opportunity to you to visit Japan or to know each other or to have experience very similar to we are providing in Kewa University or <coughs> many countries in Japan. So please enjoy today's workshop. Okay? So now at the early part of today's workshop, I would like to introduce myself and our university and our graduate school and also the many members from Keiwa University. So at the beginning, let me introduce myself. I'm Yoki, Associate Professor of Keiwa University System Design Management. So now I am teaching systems engineering in this graduate school, but before I came to university, I used to be a member of Mitsubishi Electric Corporation and I used to be a satellite system engineer. So more than 25 years experience in designing satellite systems. I designed so many satellite systems and some of them are still in orbit working correctly. So turning around the Earth now, today. Okay. And after that, I moved to some government-funded organization and uh, I was in charge of international cooperation in space business. So uh, I introduced space technology in Japan or space products in Japan to many countries including European or American countries and also Asian or South America or African countries. This is the background of me. So now, please enjoy. And starting from now, I would like to introduce KO University. So how many of it you have already known before you came to here? KO University. Have you ever heard about KO University? Oh, so many. Oh, so many. Thank you very much. Really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I shall wear our t-shirts. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to tell the truth, in the foreign countries, KO University is not so popular at this moment, unfortunately. But our university has so many history, uh, more than 150 years old, and founded by Yukichi Fukuzawa. So do you, can you say the founder of Ahmedabad University right now? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. Are you confident? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, the, our founder is Yukichi Fukuzawa. Of course, we know very well, but all the Japanese people know his name and his face because this, this is the uh, highest note in Japanese currency. Okay, do we have? <laughs> well, I don't have the large yeah, scale. I have the small one. Yeah, this one. Ah, this one is uh, a. <laughs> His face is our founder. Okay, so every Japanese knows his name and face. Mm. So, so this means our university is very popular in Japan. Mm. But starting from last year in Ahmedabad area, our university is getting much popular. <laughs> <than ever. laughs> okay, 
So please remember his face <laughs> and his name. <laughs> Maybe we have some final examination. <laughs> <laughs> Who is his name? <laughs> okay, please remember his name. <laughs> and our university is uh, there are so many faculties and graduate school and faculty members and students are large. So our university is one of the oldest private university <coughs> and maybe the fifth or sixth largest university in Japan. And also the so many active alumni all over the world. There are so many alumni society all over the world. And three prime minister and two astronauts. So this is a large number of astronauts. To tell the truth, I am applying Japanese astronauts selection. Four times. <laughs> but four times failed. <laughs> this is why I am here. <laughs> and this is the, our graduate school system, design, and management. So this is the name of our graduate school, and also our focus is also system design management. So we are established, we have established the methodologies of system design and management. So not limited to some specific measure or some specific knowledge, but also we have some broader area of methodologies will be delivered as a lecture or as an exercise. So the, this is very unique to the nation first and only graduate program for this kind of study or this kind of lecture. So uh, the way SDM graduate school is very unique and now getting much popular than ever. So the, our graduate school is, has established in 2008, very similar age of Amitabha University, Janaki Tenandake, the your graduate school. And about 200 students include very small graduate school. And more than 60% students are full-time employees, not full-time students. So they're working in daytime and come to the school after 6 o'clock or on weekend. The 60% students are full-time employees. And the students' background is not limited to engineering, but also almost all the areas of the majors. So not limited to engineering, but also business, organization, community, policy, space system, and more. Almost every kind of measures. Some student is a professional violin player, or some student is a medical doctor, or a lawyer, or so many kinds of background. And recently, the innovation design for entrepreneurs is our focus. So this is why um, we are here and we are providing these kinds of content here today. Okay? So the, again, go back to Kane. Please introduce yourself. So again, it's me. Um, my real name is Kananori, but it's too hard for you <laughs> and for everyone. So just call me Kane, but that's been my nickname. And I myself have as a background of engineer. And I used to work for Honda R&D. Who doesn't know Honda? <laughs> yes, I know your biggest customer of, of, uh, for us. Okay, and I was actually in a motorcycle R&D department. So I see a lot of my babies running around your streets. It's good to see them. But actually, my real babies were the big bikes. So I have done. Um, the large displacement um, engines for the cells in the United States. You know Harley Davidson? Yes. Yeah. I hate to say this, we did something very similar to Harley Davidson motorcycles. So, it's, yeah, the Honda engineer saying that we built something like Harley Davidson motorcycle. That's crazy, but that's the best way to communicate. But so that's something I've done as a as my first career. I was a mechanical uh, designer, mechanical engine design um, engineer, and then I was a project manager for advanced electric personal mobility. So you probably have seen a lot of weird electric driven mobility on YouTubes and maybe on the webs. I was part of you know a team that builds that kind of things. And of course, it's a lot of engineering, 
but not only engineering, but we have to think about, okay, who might be our users? What are the use cases? What are the market? What's the business around this? So I was a project manager you know, from engineering side, but also I had to design whole other things around my, my um, uh, electric vehicle. So this is where I kind of grew, started growing out of just normal engineer. I started to try to design things around engineering. And after that, I got a job at the um, University of Tokyo. Um, I was a project manager for microsatellite research and development. And microsatellite is really small. It can sit on your table. It's about 50 kilogram and 50 centimeter cubic. And it, but it's small, but just like your, your um, cell phones, it can do a job that it used to be done by two ton satellite in 19, 1980s. So now this 50 kilogram uh, satellite can do the, exactly the same thing that it used to be done by a larger satellite. And of course the cost is 100, okay? So um, that's what we were doing. And there again, not only, there was so many engineering um, tasks and issues that I had to uh, tackle and um, shoot down, but that wasn't the main focus. The focus, we, we also had the focus on, so what might be the new businesses? if the cost reduces uh, 100, right? Now many more people can join the space business or space exploration, and it's happening. Do you, who knows uh, the company named um, uh, Skybox Imaging? No? It's a California-based company. It was purchased by Google two years ago. 50, no, 500 US dollars? 50 yeah, 50 million US dollars. Yeah, I don't know, a lot of money. Okay, they were purchased by Google, and Google is now announcing they will, they will, they're going to have thousands of small satellites up on the orbit, so that they can provide internet service everywhere on the globe. Okay, and Google is not the only, only player in this field. There's so many others. Um, joining the space businesses, and it's it's it's, uh, it's a new investment for many countries like United States, Japan is starting. There is a, a new wave coming. So I was part of that too. So like you know these stories, are, uh, I'm sharing this story so that I I have my core as engineer, but I have grown out of that. I still do a lot of engineering, but I do a lot of things around it too. So I have my core as an engineer, but I'm, um, I have, I'm designing whole other things too. And currently I teach at KOSDM. I teach systems engineering with um, Professor Yoki and some other uh, faculty members. I, I also teach design project, which is a, a class very similar to this KO Edge program or whatever we're doing today. And um, I have my TAs from that class. They were the, the best students in, in the classes. So uh, I'll make them introduce um, to themselves. And also, like I was mentioning, I don't just teach, okay, because teachers are boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, no offense to teachers like <laughs> Professor Yogi. But, you know, when we talk about entrepreneurship and, you know, creating innovation, you need to be on the field, right? We need not just, you know, reading books and writing papers, but you need to have actual interaction with the market, and customers and real things. So I have my business. I ran this business with Yoshi. He will introduce himself after me. But um, it's a it's a, a design firm. We help companies and and organization to design strategy. Sometimes new product. Sometimes um, organization. And the one exciting project that we're going on. It's India. We kind of can talk about this, right? We're trying to design a new aquarium in Japan. Secret. Okay. Yes, and we're not just designing the, the physical, the infrastructure, but we're trying to design a new business model around this, and we're trying to design a new new concept behind this. So it's, it's a fun project. We're working with a, a Japanese um, big um, large company. So we do a lot of things on on, on, on field on hands on. So I, you know, I learned a lot doing that and tried to convert it into my lecture materials and my. Um, little um, talks that I share with the students. So um, I'm not, I am, you know, 
uh, project assistant professor at Keio University, but at the same time, I'm a practitioner, I'm an entrepreneur, I am aiming the innovation myself. So I, yeah, I might be talking a lot today as if I know, I know everything, I don't, okay? But I know some tips and clues. So that, that's what I'll be sharing with you. And we have a whole bunch more in a, in a real program, but I hope to share some of it. And I'll be, I'll be doing a lot of the workshop thing. And, um, and lecture in the morning and in the, in the afternoon, so you get to know me. So just feel free to call me Kane, and don't don't call me Kane, sir. Okay, that's that's not me. Don't call me Professor Ishibashi. That's my dad. Okay, so just call me Kane. All right. Okay, so Yoshi. Hello, everyone. I'm Yoshi. Please have call me Yoshi. Yes. Uh, I'm one of our boarding teacher. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm a faculty, I'm one of the faculty at KO University and the KOH program. And I, I'm teaching um, system engineering, introducing to system engineering for uh, societal system design and methodology for uh, building entrepreneurship business. Yes, this is my uh, uh, experience. So, uh, another one, uh, I'm also running uh, some company with Kane. So, uh, such as uh, manufacturing company and uh, system engineering company, we call Innovative Design LSC. So, I want to explain about my company, but Kane said already what I want to do. So, so but uh, this is my second visit in India and Ahmedabad in this classroom. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> yes, I'm very glad to be back here and talk. Uh, and to talk and discuss with you. Thank you very much. And okay. these are TAs. TAs, come from. Come, come. Okay, go. Cool. Cool. So tell us who you are. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hello, But they know some, you know what comes after this. So if you have any question, feel free to talk to them. They're around your age probably. So it's yeah, easy to talk. All right. And after the the later on today this morning, I'll have my Shani to talk about her experiences a little bit more in detail. All right. Yeah. She's ready to give a speech. <laughs> okay. So all right. Thanks. Okay. So now I'm going to take over from your PSA and I'll talk about the Edge program. Uh, I'll, so a little bit of, a, um, of you know, me talking, um, but this morning I want to give you some idea what's the program, what are the scope and aims, and, and some key um, important um, things that I want you to understand before we start our workshop. So it's going to be about a um, 90 minute, and um, so I'm, I'll try not to make it too, too boring. 
And I'll, we'll take a like, short break uh, after, um, after this uh, program introduction. Okay. So let me start from introducing you to the EDGE program. So the EDGE stands for the Advancing Development of Global Entrepreneur Program. And it's funded by the Japanese government, Ministry of Education and Science. The real name for Max is Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. They put them, everything into the, this X part. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. That's smart, maybe. Yes. But yeah, X. And uh, so here's the background information. So you probably know Japan as a very strong engineering country, or maybe science country, because we have every year um, somebody winning a Nobel Prize, right? On physics, chemistry, sometimes um, uh, the, the medicine, yes? And we, we, we had that last year too. So you, you think of that. So many research driven innovative activities has been conducted, but not so much successful as they come into market. So you probably see, you, some of you may disagree. Hey, Japan is a very innovative country. It was, maybe, 30 years ago. Sony, Honda, you know, all these, maybe the Toyota, they, they were all innovative you know, companies in past, past years, but recently we're not winning this game. Okay, we're very good at uh, making things in a better way. You probably have some Japanese product, but we're not on the on a big um, winner in the sales. Okay? So, Right now, the country of Japan is seeking for innovation project and innovation so that we will you know, regain our power in the, the world business games. And so the, the government purpose is to enhance activities such as generating entrepreneurial ventures, developing human resources, and making these activities sustainable with setting up innovation ecosystems. So these, these are the words taken out from the government document. Kind of makes sense, it doesn't. Government document and this edge program. Okay, uh, we will be talking about Kale Virgin Edge program, but the edge program actually consists of um, many other universities. So we're one of 13 universities that has been selected by the government, and uh, we're also a part of the four key universities that they assign us. So. We're not the only one running the, the program called EDGE program. There, there are University of Tokyo, University of Kyoto. Those are two prestigious uh, national universities in Japan. And there are so many private universities like Waseda University, Ritsumeika University. These are um, prestigious old um, private universities in Japan. They're all involved. They're all involved and we're just part of this uh, big franchise. And among the 13 universities, to tell you the truth, we're the best. Yes, and we just had a discussion with the Ministry of Education. They said, they kind of mumbled and said, yes, you're kind of nice. So they, they, they want to be equal to every university. But yeah, we, we get the most fun out of 13 universities. And uh, this is our second year of three-year program. And then we're, we're getting the reputation that we're doing this job a very good way. And it's, like I said, it's a three-year program and 20 million US dollar uh, program. So it's a big program it's distributed to 13 universities and 13 universities running very different kind of edge program. So um, we've been talking about this entrepreneurship and innovation, but this is something very, very new for Japanese academia to try this because we're not known for this. California, yes. Stanford, yes. But Japan, no. Not known for entrepreneurship, not known for startups. We're more non known for larger corporations. You probably know, you know, names like Mitsubishi, Toshiba, uh, you know, what, Panasonic, right? You all drive Honda, of course, right? Yeah, so you're, you're, we're known for that, but now, because of this background information, we're, Japan is seeking for entrepreneurs and startups, or uh, not maybe just an entrepreneur, entrepreneur who can start a new project or new business inside this large enterprise. So this is a new thing happening in Japan, starting from 2013 and 15, um, and we're, we're part of that. So we think a lot of things are going, but a lot of things are changing very fast, and Edge program is one of the very uh, starting, very first pilot project by the government, and it's very experimental, but that chaotic, but it's fun. So we're taking advantage of this chaotic moment, we're trying many new things. And the relationship 
with these international schools are a part of this you know, trial, and it's been very successful so far. And the, it's KOH program. So this is the KOH program in, in words. So by learning innovative thinking approaches, the participants would convert them, their strengths and mindset to interdisciplinary approach capability, new value creation capability, new business synthesis capability necessary for innovators in global context. So this is like everything in a short sentence. And this KOH program consists of two parts. Two parts. One part, it, this is when you come to Japan. Actually, I should say there's three parts. This is demo workshop that starts in, right now. And then once you come to Japan, there's an intensive workshop. It's a intensive, it's very intensive. Maybe Hashem will uh, follow up on me. But six days, full day curriculum starting. And it's a structured combination of design thinking and system thinking and business synthesis thinking. And we learn both mindset and tool set. Okay, this is the very um, essential part. We don't just talk about, okay, here's how you um, do things. Oh, fill up this framework or, okay, use this equation. No, we don't do that. You know, we talk about mindset, how you set your mindset, because without mindset, all the tools makes no sense, okay? So we always try to combine, or my personally uh, taste is that I'll put the mindset in more focus because that's very important. Yeah, you can learn a lot of tool set later on from the book. Or, or, yeah, you can read them. But mindset it has to be learned in an environment like this. So that's our focus. So this intensive workshop is six days try to prepare you for the next step, the project work. It's a project space for learning. PBL, you're probably familiar with this term. Um, teams of four to five. So actually, you're kind of mocking the situation, your team of four or five. And um, we'll pursue a new value proposition in its implementation plan. Okay? And you will pursue it with uh, some diverse background um, teams. So engineer, um, you have a marketing people, you have business people, you may have uh, somebody from very different background. Okay? So this is the EDGE program, the EDGE program. And this is the tentative 2016 schedule. So if you are coming to Japan, this may slightly change a little bit, but this is what's going to happen. So you come in September. And September is a good season to come because the weather is good. You may get one or two typhoon, which is a, a hurricane. <laughs> it's not too bad. But yeah, so this is where you come. And then um, here, here goes the, it's actually six day, but in the middle we have a forum. Um, this is where um, the other faculty member from other university come in and give a talk. And we will plan, um, plan this later on this year. Uh, but it's going to be a, a huge uh, discussion session, including the participants and the faculty member from the other universities. And after the a week, we'll have the project-based learning starts. And it's going to be three months, uh, but we don't have lectures every day. Every other week, we have lectures. And so your team will pursue um, your project, and you do the, the, the reporting every other week. Okay? And, and in between these two weeks, um, you just hang up. No. You do a lot of work with your um, buddy, with your team, and also extra curriculum will, um, uh, will have it for you. So um, it's, a, it's only, you, you think it's only three months, it's, but a lot to do. A lot to do, and it's, it's, it's fun. Okay? So, and then that, that's the short term perspective in 2016, and here's the long term perspective. And we have been conducting this for two years so far. And this is our third year. So first year, we only had people from Japan participating. And we asked them to recruit the next um, edge participants. So now we're creating some network. Um, not only, so this is how we plan this. We wanted the people to you know, connect it, get connected uh, throughout these three years and more to come. So we're in the third year, 2016. and. Uh, so this is you, okay, from overseas. And this is Aishani, who participated in 2015. Okay, so and then Aishani probably gave some speech to you all, um, to introduce you to the program. But this is the network we want to create. So our ecosystem, the heart of our ecosystem is you. Okay, we want to create a human network that's been through the same program, same philosophy, same concept, 
and you know you go out somewhere else after the program and you become somebody but you still I would love you to come back maybe introduce your friend uh, maybe coming back as a as, you know she's coming back as a TA right like a mentor and maybe one day she may come back as an instructor or investor angel right who has money and if she sees the possibility in you she may say hey come to my office I'll, I'll, I'll sign you the check okay so this is you know something we want to create in the in the future it's been three years and I see my participants from first year and second year coming back to us and you know giving us a lot of feedbacks and a lot of their stories that they build up on whatever they learn so this is the ecosystem and of course um, we try to keep this alumni uh, close and then we have uh, we don't just do um, programs but we have a lot of social nights so if you come um, you'll, 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 joining, you'll be joining the social nights and social nights we invite many entrepreneurs or somebody who's doing their own project right now and we don't ask anybody like really old and established like you know 65 year old used to be entrepreneur success, successful no we don't ask them to come because their stories are good but it's not you cannot relate yourself right so we always ask somebody in their 30s maybe <coughs> late 30s or early 30s around your age to come and talk um, give us a talk about what they're doing right now so they don't have success stories they have stories they're working on so it's, it's a, it's a, so that's something we are trying to incorporate in the in the ecosystem. We try to um, get a network not among the students, the network around the real entrepreneurs around it, uh, around us, and um, uh, the faculty network around it. So that's the ecosystem. But the core, the heart of the, the ecosystem is it's you guys. Right? And I'm not talking about the, the ones who participated in, in the project in Japan, but program in Japan, but those who participated in this workshop from last year, you probably heard some word from them too, right? So I consider you as a part of the ecosystem too. And I want to you know, make it grow you know, in the future. So even though it's a three year, the third year this year, 2016, but um, we're, our, we, have, we, don't, we don't have a promise from the ministry, but we have some words that they say that, okay, we would like to continue this. So um, we're hoping to continue this for uh, years to come. And so after you've done this workshop, either whether you get selected or not, I want you to be talking about the program. And if we're running this again, I want your friends to come too. Okay. Very good. So that's it about my um, uh, introducing you to the EDGE program and it's been about an hour so let's take a quick break before I get into the, the lecture part so it's uh, do we have a clause right here? 10.45 okay it's 10.45 so let's take um, I don't know uh, 10 minute no 5 minute break okay why don't we come back in 5 minutes and uh, I'll start my lecture okay so little past um, 10 minutes oh okay we have a clause there okay let's come no, that's not. <laughs> okay, I'll set up the timer. We have a timer here. So I'll just you know set it on five minutes. So please be back in five minutes. I'll take a little break. Okay. Alright.
communicate you what our intentions are of the workshop. So there are two keywords, um, innovation and entrepreneurship. I'll try to explain you what we mean by innovation and innovation. We mean innovative. They're two different words. Okay, I'll try to make myself clear on that. And entrepreneurship can mean a lot of things, right? So I'll try to make clear what our focus of um, KO Edge on entrepreneurship. So, like I said, innovation is a, is a buzzword right now in Japan. All the companies, like all the large companies, have somewhere in their website a word innovation. But many of them have no clue what, what it means, what it really means, or how to do this. Okay? And so we have our version of explanation of this. And entrepreneur is another buzzword that's being used by Minister of Education. But talking about Minister of Education, what do they know about entrepreneurship? They're Ministry of Education. They've never done any real job. Yes, too much. But yes, they're the government people. So they have not done any like selling or any, any creation. Right? So you know, we have our version of it, uh, entrepreneur or entrepreneurship explanation. So, let me start out with innovation. So, this is a book, it's a very good book, if you're interested in it, take a look. Uh, managing Innovation, Integrating, uh, yeah, so Managing Innovation is a, it's a textbook, often used in United States MBA courses. And in that book, they have carefully selected several different books, references, and then they kind of, um, integrated together into this phrase, okay? Innovation is a process of turning opportunity into new ideas and uh, putting these into widely used practice. So this is the, the way they put it. I really like it then. And if you check out like 10 books from, I don't know, maybe different authors, you can find 10 different definitions for innovation. So what they've done is, you know, they took, they literally went to many books, and then they kind of summarized it in, in one sentence. And there are two things that I want to point out in this sentence. So there are two parts in this. Turning opportunity into new ideas, that's one part, okay? And then the other part, putting these into widely used practice, okay? The first part is important, okay? You need to find an opportunity, and you need to, you know, you know, you know, create a new idea out of this. And then you need to put that out there. You need to implement it, and you need people to admit it, appreciate it. Otherwise, we're not talking innovation, right? So innovation, as you can see here, innovation is a social phenomenon, right? Because we, we can only identify innovation retrospectively. You have to stand in the future and looking back and say, oh, that was an innovation, okay? You probably don't know whether you're doing innovation or not when you're really pushing it forward, right? Because you're in the process of people accepting it. So you don't really know whether you're doing it right or not. So what we focus in KOH is the first part, okay? Of course, I'm not saying the later part is less important. It is important, but this cannot be taught, it has to be done, right? So, but turning opportunity into new ideas, this part you can learn, okay? You can learn, but it's very difficult to teach, okay? So we try our best, and, uh, and you, you try your best, so then you, we share the concept and you kind of get the feeling of how to do things innovatively, okay? And you wish, or you hope, and you plan to become an innovation one time in the future. So that's, uh, that's our, how we understand innovation, how we distinguish from you know, being innovative or coming up with innovative idea or innovative plan, and how it's different from innovation, okay? And this is another um, term, entrepreneur. This is out of the uh, businessdictionary.com. So it says um, entrepreneur is, is someone who exercises initiative by organizing a venture to take benefit of an opportunity, okay? And I, I, like, I like this part. This is a, from Schopenhauer. Um, greatly value self-reliance and strive for distinction through excellence and are highly optimistic 
Otherwise, nothing will be undertaken. And always favor challenges of medium risk. Medium risk. So neither too easy nor um, ridiculously hard. Okay. So this is uh, how he described, and I agree. This is the entrepreneur. So maybe it's not just only about you know um, starting your business. It's the mindset. It's the the spirit. Okay, that we're talking about. So we don't talk about how to fill up the form to set up your company. No, we don't talk, talk about that. You can learn elsewhere. We talk about the spirit and attitude of the entrepreneur. And we, call, we are calling that entrepreneurship. Okay? And an entrepreneur in global context. Okay? So this is, this is from me. This is in quote. So entrepreneur in global context, this is how we define Entrepreneur that is interested in global trend and aware of global changes and somewhat aware of one's identity in a global context. This is sometimes important. As you can probably hear, I studied in the United States. I was there for uh, many years, six or seven years. So I was born in Japan, raised in the States, I went to school in the States, came back to Japan. And so I had to realize this, oh, I'm Japanese. You don't realize that you're Indian or you're, you're from Gujarat or you're from Ahmedabad unless you're out here, out there, sorry, right? So you need to understand your identity in a global perspective. So that's something I really personally um, think, and probably my TAs agree on it, yeah. And curious and careful about other cultures, customs, and languages, and respect them, okay? And Indian people are good at this because you already have so many languages. I don't know how many how many thousand you have around here, but bunch, right? Yes. You already, and you have so many different cultures, customs, food, and languages. So I see that you guys are very good at it. And not afraid to communicate with others by any means. It doesn't probably apply this to you, but we travel around many Asian countries. And Japan, unfortunately, is the less English-speaking country in the world, right? One statistic says that North Korean and us are competing against the average points that we can get on the, the English skill test. North Korea, that's our competitive. <laughs> but we need to do a better job. English. But it's, it's true. But you know, I'm not just talk, talking about English skills. It's about communication. And English is just a, a tool, right? I'm talking about the attitude, OK? And communication can be done in many ways. Like, you can use, you know, the Google translation is doing a pretty good job. You can write, draw, you can, I don't know, sing and dance. So, not being afraid to communicate without language, with language, with foreign language, with unknown language, that's something very important. But you try to communicate. Okay, you try to, not just speak, you try to listen, try to understand, okay? And aiming for borderless value creation. That's another thing. Okay? You when okay, maybe this doesn't come in the lecture today, but when we do tell me estimate, when you try to imagine your market size, I always tell my edge students to think of, okay, let's start from 7.5 billion. Okay? Out of 7.5 billion, how many customers are you looking at? Half? A third? So we try to do this discussion, okay? So that don't try to you know don't try to think okay we have this much people in Ahmedabad who want the water, but there are so many others who want water, right? So we try to you know um, encourage our KOH participant not to you know make a very small tiny segment inside our brain, but instead let's try to think global, try to think the the borderless value creation. Okay, so this is entrepreneurship mindset or entrepreneur mindset that we talk about in KOH. And like I said, innovative and entrepreneurship, these are two focuses, okay? So because it's very difficult to talk and actually do about innovation, but we can start doing thinking in an innovative way or start trying to find ideas in an innovative way. So we think innovation, innovative is one of the primary causes for innovation. And entrepreneurship is the must-have for any type and any kind of innovator. Okay, that's the mindset and attitude that you must have. And so now let me talk about innovation and innovative. Okay? They're very similar, but I want to talk about the difference. Okay? So instead of me doing a talk, I have an example of innovation. 
Yeah, innovation. So like I said, this is the new idea converted, I mean, uh, opportunity converted into new idea, and then becoming a widely spread use. Okay, that's the innovation. I'll show you the example, um, great example with the video. Hi, I'm Graham, and this is my twin brother. Ten years ago, he was diagnosed with leukemia, but thankfully, his life was saved by a complete stranger who had registered to be a marrow donor. He was lucky, though. You see, more than 650,000 people are diagnosed with leukemia and lymphoma every year, and for the most severe cases, like my brother's, a marrow transplant is their last hope, but only about half find a match. Unfortunately, the marrow donor registry is one of the most underrepresented donor programs in the world. And it's no wonder, really. Most people think that registering as a marrow donor is painful and complicated. But really, all it takes is a couple drops of blood. The only pain is actually finding a way to register. Now, you have to either take time out of your busy day to go to a special doctor, or order a registration kit online, pay $16 for it, and while you're at it, pay for the shipping. We've made it so difficult to register. It's amazing that a few good people out there care enough to jump through all these hoops just to save a random person's life. <laughs> but the fact is, most don't. Imagine, though, how many lives could be saved if registering as a marrow donor wasn't so hard. What if we could turn a normal, everyday act into a chance to save a life? Introducing Help. I want to save a life. A package of over-the-counter bandages that also doubles as a simple marrow donor registry kit. So the next time you cut yourself shaving or shuffling papers or making dinner and you reach for a box of bandages, you'll have a chance to save someone's life. You just put a couple of drops of blood on the swabs, toss it in a prepaid envelope, drop it in the mail, and that's it. You're a potential lifesaver. This simple idea brought together a pretty unlikely pair, Help Remedies, a pharmaceutical company, and DKMS, the world's largest marrow donor registry. And then something pretty amazing happened. The TED conference chose it as one of their favorite ideas of the year, and even helped us launch it at this year's global conference. And since then, the whole world's helped us spread the word, and share our story. And in just a few short months, sales of health bandages are already up more than 1900%. But amongst all these sales figures and media impressions and YouTube hits, there's really only one statistic that matters. Thanks to this little pack of bandages, Marrow registrations have nearly tripled. Who would have thought a few paper cuts could make a world of difference and actually save lives? So this is an example from the States and you would have expected to sh you know, me showing you some very technical example, but no, no technology whatsoever involved. But do you still recall the, um, the, the definition? Turning opportunity into new ideas and make it into a, a widely, spread, widely used practice. According to the definition, I think this is a very good innovation happened in the United States. So turning in the opportunity into ideas was the opportunity that you, you cut yourself, right? And then they had this idea, hey, we just need a few drops of blood for the donation, okay? Yeah, the, the registration. And then they came up with this idea. And the, the, the best part is that they implemented this, and then they had tripled in a, in a few short months. They tripled the number of registration or a marathon. That's the part that I think that's wonderful. Okay? So you can see the two parts, okay? Being innovative. You you know there is a way to do this, right? The normal way is you stand in some in a busy street and say, hey, we need marathon donors. Okay? Please please register. Or you pull out flyers. But wasn't working. It was, but wasn't effective enough. But this took a very different road, but achieve the same goal, right? So they were innovative, they were out of the box thinkers, right? They could have done, okay, well, let's do more promotion. They, they have done, they could have done like, let's do YouTube, 
okay? Or they, let's do, I don't know, Instagram or whatever. But no, they took a very different way. They didn't think like everyone else was thinking. And then they were successful. So I think this is a very innovative thought and then implemented and happened to be an innovation. So I think it's a very good example of innovation from, um, to, uh, from 2012. Okay? You can find a lot about them if you go Google them. And here's another example of innovation. I, some of you may agree, just may disagree. But I kind of like this because it's fun. I'll show you the, the next one. Living off welfare has become a common way of life. So common that it is celebrated in the greatest salsa hit of all time, Maguana, which translates to, I do nothing. belongs to a Gran Combo de Puerto Rico, the most famous salsa band in the world. As the largest bank in Puerto Rico, Banco Popular's success depends on the island's economy. So to help propel it in the right direction, it convinced the Gran Combo to rewrite history. On August 16th, a simultaneous broadcast roadblocked all of the country's TV and radio stations. The band unexpectedly released a new version of their song with new lyrics. This time, with a completely different message. That's being innovative. Okay. 
So I'll show you the innovative, not innovation, but innovative example. So, okay, so it was the trash bin, and they wanted people to, you know, pick up the trash and put it in the bin, right? This is something you, we all want, right? But it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, and you, what's the normal way? In the box thinking tells you, okay, we need to put up a sign. We need to start a campaign telling, you know, be, you know be, to become a little bit more um, conscious about the trash and blah, 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 blah. That's the in-the-box thinking. But their approach was, hey, how about making the trash bin a little bit fun? Adding a little funness or fun to the box, I mean the trash bin, might, might help us to get the job done. And it's done. All right? And I'm not saying this is innovation, because maybe second day, third day, nobody cares. All right? it, it will not spread and will not stay. But they were thinking innovatively, right? Out of the box thinking. Because people normally think we need to throw a campaign. We need to throw a campaign to raise their awareness and we need to ask them to become more uh, morally in a better position. But no, adding a funness into it was the key. Okay? That was their insight and they implemented it. And they, there's another series of projects. It's called Fun Fairy. And I'll, I'll show you the, the second video. Something that people usually don't do, 
and they can drive people to do to do a different behavior. Okay, and uh, again, I said this is not innovation because maybe a third day people just get rid of it because it's just too loud, it's too lazy, and I don't know. It's, it's not going to be there forever, right? But their thought is very innovative. Okay, because many people like like in the places in Japan, like many places in Japan, they want people to go on the on the stairs, like you know, company Honda, because Honda as a company they want people you know people to be healthy, right? And then they want to you know uh, reduce their electricity cost, so they want people to go on to the, the you know the stairs instead of the elevator or escalator. But people don't because it's kind of tired, right? If you see an escalator, you go to the escalator, right? Even you guys, you're young. And yeah, I saw that elevator was not for you, right? It's prohibited for the students. I, I saw the sign, yes. And so, and the normal in the box way is to put up a sign saying, hey, please do not use the uh, escalator if you're young and healthy. Please go up the stairs. But who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody knows. But they were out of the box thinkers. They added a fund to the stairs and they drove 66 more pe percent people to the stairs. Okay. Again, it's not innovation, but it's a very innovative way of thinking to bring the many people onto the behavior that they want. Okay. So this is something I want you to try. Okay. Because trying for innovation is a super long shot. Okay. Yes, we are all trying because that's where you make you know a world of change. But it's very difficult. But you can start thinking innovatively or you know thinking seeing things in an innovative way from today okay so that's our focus so innovative paleo flavor is thinking outside of the box okay and to think outside of the box you need to understand the box first okay so your box you may have your box based on your background whatever you have seen so far whatever you have learned that's your box Okay, let me ask you, how many of you are from business background? Okay, how many of you are from science engineering background? Okay, how many of you are from none of them? None of those. Okay, what what are you? <laughs> Art? Who is it? Heritage. Heritage. Literature. Literature, wow. Okay, great. Great. So you all have, those are boxes, okay? I tend to think like an engineer. You tend to think like a business person. You tend to think like a heritage, I don't know the heritage person, but heritage person, a designing, designer person. So those are boxes. And of course, if you, you know, if you are in the organization, for example, like I was an engineer in Honda, and I, my organization has a certain box, okay? We think India is a good market, right? But that's our box, yes. And certain domains, for example, automobile domain, okay? We're talking about industry. Industry people are in the box, okay? They think they know the world from their perspective, but that's the box, right? And they're biased, okay? Or they're sometimes haunted or doomed in this box. And certain country or certain culture have a box. We think eating with our hand is not so Good, but eating hands in the in the world about four billion people eat with their hands, right? So you know, certain country culture have a box. So to get out of the box, you need to understand the box. So we don't we don't really um, in the in the program we don't just say hey go think outside the box. That doesn't work. Okay, to get out of the box, you need to understand your box. It's much faster and effective if you try to understand the box first and then try to get out of that. Okay. And a new solution with a new value. Okay, this is another focus of our KO Edge. Our ultimate aim is not innovative technology or not innovative marketing techniques or, or ways of doing things, but innovative value creation. If no new value is created, then your technology or your whatever new way of doing marketing doesn't make much sense. I mean doesn't create a new value, it doesn't mean anything. So can you remember the first example I showed you, the, the health remedies? Yes? That 
definitely created a new value, of course, or it boosted the, the existing va value, right? So we're always in the program talking about new solution that creates or that enhances a new value. Okay? And many engineering background people, you know, you probably can um, understand what we're talking about. We're, we get too much excited about what we do. Okay? That's our output. But our focus is not only on output, but outcomes. What happens to the people who uses this, this product? Okay, what happens to the people who go through this service? Okay, that's the value we're talking about. So we're focusing on not only the output, but also the outcomes. What happens to the people? What happens to the community? What happens to the society? Okay, and I, I think that's the discussion you do here at Amit Abad University too. I've talked to your deans and I have talked to your um, uh, uh, the, the deputy directors and, and many faculty members and I, I really uh, we resonated on this, this um, concept. And I saw your some of your classes have um, the values and some posters, right? Flyers, yes. So that we have the same um, focus. And here's entrepreneurship. Okay. So entrepreneurship is a bit in a business dictionary. You know, I I already shown you this. And then the person with entrepreneurship is this person, right? <coughs> so it's it's about um, you. It's about you doing things, you're getting things done. Okay, you don't say, "Hey, one day I will have that," or "One day I will reach to this technology." No, you try to find your way to reach to the person, the right person. You you, you need to be, you know, you need to be responsible for whatever move you're you're taking. Okay, and uh, let me show you innovation enthusiasts without entrepreneurship attitude or mindset example in a video okay so I'm so I don't want you to be somebody like him So they created this video, maybe to, to raise awareness, hey, innovation is not about just talking, it's about doing. So, you know, I'm showing you this example as, don't be just innovation enthusiastic without the permission, without the mindset of you doing things, okay? And here's another example. Someday, somehow, 
Yeah? It's about you doing your job and you know you doing a lot of things. And it's about thinking, doing, and feeling. Okay? And many of the times, you know, the entrepreneurship is talking about doing, right? Yes, it's important, but just doing doesn't take you too far. Alright? So and we're not talking about anybody on the street becoming an entrepreneur. I'm, we're talking to a best student in Ahmedabad University becoming an entrepreneur. I don't expect you to selling fruit, okay, on, on the street. I expect you to be selling fruit all over the world. Right? That's the scale we're talking about. So you need to be doing, of course, but you need to be thinking and feeling a lot of things. And you need to communicate your thinking, doing, and feelings. Okay? And even though I said it's all about I, but you need a team, okay? You need a team. Nobody in the, the real entrepreneurs disagree on this, okay? Um, it's about finding your team. You do not need to do everything by yourself. You really need to have a team, okay? You need to find the right one, okay? And, or find one who is connected to the right one. Okay? This is important. If you want to become successful as an entrepreneur, have many friends. But not just regular friends, but good friends with good friends. Okay? That really helps you. And you are already starting this. This is your potential uh, right ones. Okay? And you want to find someone from you know, other fields. Right? I work with Yoshi, he's a business person, I'm an engineer, we find ourselves the right one for each other, okay? And maybe his right one on, on the other side is not a right one for me, right? So you need to find your right one, your team, and then you need to find your team. Don't ask anybody, anybody for the right one for you. You need to go and find that person, okay? And you don't order your team. Okay? You inspire them. Because if you start ordering your team, then they'll try to meet your expectation, they'll try to answer your orders, but they'll never surprise you. Okay? You don't want that team. Okay? If you're like a big company's manager, you kind of have to give orders. That's, that's, yes, that's part of your life. But if you're starting a, a new project, even in a big enterprise, or if you're starting up your, your own thing, you want to inspire your team, and of course your members are better than you, okay? So there's a, yeah, don't hire anybody that you can control, okay? But try to get the people that better you and inspire them. So that's your job. And our flavor of entrepreneurship is not necessarily right now startup CEOs, okay? I'm more, you know, we're more on what time to write startup CXOs. CTO, CFO, COO, CEOs, it depends. Okay? And more, you know, more or, or, or emphasis on more on this. Your friend, startup CEO, somebody has some idea, will love to have you join her venture or your, her, her, their, her or his idea. Okay? So the KO Edge are, is aiming to create not like the CEO, not only the CEO, but somebody who is good working with these and who will be the right one for those people, okay? So that's, the, that's our flavor on entrepreneurship. So, okay, up to this point, we'll be talking about innovation and uh, entrepreneurship and building a company. So, so then innovation and successful enterprise are the ultimate goals of the program? No, I don't think so. So new value creation is the ultimate goal, but this is very difficult to teach, but this is something that we can share. So, KOA's program goal is to convert you to a value creation minded person. Okay? You may have a strength in back, uh, engineering, uh, managing, or you know, the literature, heritage, whatever. But I want all of you to become, okay, what are the values that I'm creating? What are the values this project or this output is creating? So I want you to be focusing on the output and the outcomes. Okay? And innovation and ent uh, enterprise are both merely an approach for uh, value creation. For, so taking two, two keywords, innovative and entrepreneurship. These are two pillars that enables the new value creation. Okay? So this sits on top of it. 
This sits on top of it. So we don't get too excited about innovative technology. We don't get excited about you building a company. Okay? We get excited when you make outcomes. Okay? When we see change happening, new value created, new value appreciated. Okay? So those are the, 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 the mindset of, or the goal of the program. By the way, what's the, what, what is value? Okay. You think of this. <laughs> Many people do. Like my Mexican PA. No. <laughs> no, okay. So it's not only about money, okay? Yes, part of it is about money, right? But value. When we talk about what is value, what was the value of help remedies? Was the number of registration for a marrow donor, right? Saving lives. That was the value. Wikipedia. Do you often access Wikipedia? Yeah, that's okay. Do you know three uh, two professors? Professor Wikipedia, Professor Google. Two best professors. Okay? He will answer anything you ask, okay? Be careful. He will answer whatever you ask. Okay? He will not suggest you anywhere that you never ask. Okay? So you have to be right asking the right question to get the right answer from these two professors. But he's fully knowledge, you knowledgeable of the world. I don't know, knowledge, yes. So we can see what's the value it's bringing? Many things, right? So it depends on who you talk to. Let's say if we talk to somebody in Africa, he has an internet connection, but he doesn't go to school. He can learn a whole bunch of things from Wikipedia, right? So for him, Wikipedia creates a very large value. Somebody like in R&D department in Honda, we go there to check out the, the fundamental physics behind something we're looking for, right? So Wikipedia creates so many values. Yes, it's a you know, it's an integrated information, but it creates different values, right? Do you know any of this? Yeah? Crowdfunding? Yes? Kickstarter? The GoFundMe? Yes, yes. So, what's the value this, these things created? It's of course helping the startups, but if you're investing in on this, you get the excitement, right? You see you're supporting your, this baby startup is growing. You, 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 know, you get excited with the team, right? So it's not only just supporting the new companies, but the people who donated a very small amount of money, you don't have a fortune to spend, but you have a very small amount of money to spend. And then you share the excitement with this new, new idea or new challenge, right? So it's creating multiple values, multiple values. Here's a trick question. This is the whole map. What's the value of this one, Chris? Yes? The answer is, of course, depends, right? For me, this is the value it's created. These are my two kids, three years old and one year old. I gave them a the, the world map. They love it. And I love to see them hanging out around the, the world map and they're talking. They're not I don't know their language, they're talking. And they're like so excited. I showed you where I'm going, and they're like, India, India. They're excited. So for me, this is a bad one. Okay, But after two seconds, they're like this. So. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, this is a value. Of course, it's in, you know, provides us information on 250 countries around the world, and it provides us latitude and you know, latitude. But that's information, okay? that's output. But values, the outcomes from this is various. Okay? But you want your mind focused on two things. Output and you have to have a good output and always thinking about the outcomes. All right? So those are the things that we try to focus. So value is someone's benefit, someone's gain, someone's joy, someone's satisfaction, pain relief, health, excitement, peace of mind, so many things. All right, so this is the goal, okay? When we ask our um, project-based learning um, teams to come up with a business idea or plan, 
Of course, we ask them, okay, what's uh, your output? But we always ask, so what, what, value, what value are you creating? Are you going to create? Okay? We use the term value proposition. You have probably heard this, right? Yeah. Do you, you do the uh, business model canvas? Yes. Right? What, what's the hardest part to fill in? Probably the middle, right? Value proposition, VP. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's in the very middle. Yeah. Because unless you fill that part, nothing follows, right? That is the most important. And then you know the second book, right? Value proposition canvas? Value proposition model? Or what was the second name? Second book? Uh, I forgot. Yeah. But it's a value proposition uh, generation canvas or whatever. It's from the same. Um, I'll forward, yeah, the, the answer. So, of course, that's the most important thing, okay, to, to start thinking. And that's our focus, too. So, okay, we try to design around this concept, okay? Of course, thinking outside of the box and new value proposition, okay? And that is out of the box, is, is something that we would like to focus. And orchestrate implementation, okay? So it's not necessarily you doing everything. Of course, you're responsible for everything. But you don't have to do it on your own, by yourself. You find a team. Okay? And you orchestrate implementation, and you form to a solid start. And of course, you try to accelerate the penetration. You accelerate so that it will become an innovation one, one day. So you know, in, in business terms, it's called growth or scale. right? So this is uh, I try to um, summarize the tail edge person like uh, like who are we going to create? So he or she does find insight so that they can go out of the box and try to orchestrate implementation and accelerate penetration. Any new value proposition and then a solid start and then a growth. And he or she behaves ideation, structuralization, and then thinking different all the time. Okay. And thinking different, you may think, hey, okay, we go crazy and brainstorm. Well, that's important, but at the same time, you have to be smart enough to understand the, the people in the box, okay? You need to understand what's in the box, how people think inside a box. Otherwise, you're not going out of, out of the box, all right? So these are the, the key, key terms that we use in the edge program. And then the vision is very similar. So what you have already, before you come to the program, strong domain knowledge. I know you're fresh out of the college or still in the college. So your, your background, <coughs> that counts, right? You have to stand on that. That's where you start. So in the, in the program, if you come to Japan, you'll be meeting uh, many people with real jobs. So um, uh, maybe uh, Shani might uh, talk to you about that. But she was with, the, with a, a guy. He's 45. He was in, in the program. He's a well-experienced engineer, software engineer from which is Xerox. Xerox is a you know, top engineering major job. So, or maybe sometimes you know you're from certain place in the world, right? You're expert. I'm expert in Japan. Right? I was born in Japan, and so I'm expert in you know Japanese food and things like that. So those are your domain. I'm not necessarily talking about what, what's your major, what you have a diploma from, okay? And entrepreneur mindset. So, you know, it's very difficult. I don't know if maybe I'm not here, maybe we can discuss later. I don't know if we can teach this. We almost think that you need to be born with it. Or you have to, either you have it, or no, okay? But here's the case. Many people will never have a chance to find it or you know, never have a chance to even search inside of it. Okay? So, entrepreneur mindset, I want you to try to you know, find it. Okay? But don't get too disappointed if you don't find it. Okay? It's still, you can be a best friend with somebody who is full of this, but needs your help. Okay? And how many international friends? That's, you know, or you know, be able to become a friend. Yeah, yeah, you're good at this, yes. <laughs> so, you know, not, it's, it's, you have to have this attitude to become whoever uh, the KOH person that we like to create. So what we learn or what we offer is innovative thinking, you know, intensive workshop, project work, project work, and then what you become is a new value proposition, creation capability, new business synthesis capability, and, and 
the disciplinary approach capability. So these are the uh, kind of the structure that we have in our mind. And the scope, okay? Um, here are three things. <coughs> How, what, and why, right? And a lot of things you learn in this school maybe is more on the how side, okay? This is important, trust me. I'm an engineer, I live in this world, okay? But at one, maybe at one point you will realize, hey, we need the right why, and we need the right what set to even begin how, okay? So you need to understand why. Why is it important? Why is this issue you're trying to tackle is important? And why you, right? Why not anybody else in the world, any, any existing enterprise? Why is it you doing this, okay? What's your competency? Why, why, is it, why do we invest on you, right? And why do you, even you think you want to invest your time and money and resource to this, right? So you always want to ask yourself, why me? Why, why should I do this? What, why? Yeah, okay. And you need to define what. What to solve, what to achieve. Okay? It doesn't come in, in, in a linear way. You need to think. And you see many people solving the same problems. You want to avoid that. Okay? You want to avoid going that road, but you want to try to find the different road that takes you to the, the same, same level. Okay? Just like the, the garbage, you know, the, the smart garbage team. Right? They aim the same thing, but they took the very different road. And what to achieve, you need to set on your own. And then, here comes how. You need to have a, you need to think how to solve, and how to implement, and of course how to grow. Okay? And in the KOH program, I know it's a, it's a lot to ask, but we try to have everything as our scope. We talk a lot about why. We'll ask you a lot about why. Why, why that problem? So we don't give you problems. You, we ask you to define the problems, and we try, we ask you. So why? And what are you going to solve? And what are you going to achieve? Okay, you need to decide on that because you're in school. Many cases you're giving problem. Okay, and people say, okay, if you are 80% success with your pass, okay, these are all given in many cases. But if you're out there, you need to. Think these with your own You need to keep asking yourself. Okay? So that's something we do. And this is like a summary of the program. So KOH person capability structure model. So new creation, new value creation capability is something that sits on the top. Okay? And then the, I, I'll break down into um, pieces, but in the program we have design thinking. As you probably know, design thinking is a uh, is something introduced by you know Stanford and IDEO in Stanford, California, and system thinking. That's one of you know me and uh, Professor Yogi's expertise. But you need to try to think the world as a system. Okay? You try to design whatever you're designing as a system. Okay? Everything consists of parts, and parts doesn't add up itself. You need to design the little parts so that it will function. It will behave as a system. Okay? So system thinking, these are two pillars. And then by learning this, I want you to try acquire the capability to interdisciplinary approach. Okay, these will really help you to do that. And of course, business synthesis. Um, you need to be able to create business around your idea. Or you need to implement your idea into, into the business. And when you talk about business, we don't just talk about cash and money. So we try to talk about the value. We will uh, talk about the value creation business synthesis later on today. But these are three things. Okay? And of course, your domain knowledge. Okay, I'm an engineer, I'm a mechanical engineer, and slash electrical slash software. I do a lot of things, but I'm an engineer, I have my domain. And I'm Japanese, that's also my domain. Okay? So sitting on top of that, you create a new value. So this is the, the capabilities model that we have in our mind, okay, and so that we try to share with you, and, you know, maybe after after you <coughs> done this workshop, you want to think, okay, what's my domain knowledge, okay, well, where am I lacking, or where am I weak on, maybe you can use this structure to you know, think about yourself, and here's a tentative um, workshop, intensive workshop uh, schedule, so I'm not going to get into details, but 
Um, we have um, seven days, six days of workshops, and one day of forum. So we have split it, split it different agendas. So first day, kickoff and innovative thinking. So we will ask you to, you know, uh, we'll try to make you ready for the, for the rest of the days. So, and then we will have a one day dedicated for design thinking, and the other day dedicated for system thinking, and then we have a forum in the middle, and then the prototyping testing is another uh, thing that we have. Oh, I should have shown you, I'll show you a little bit later. But we have a prototyping room, uh, we call it Edge Lab. We have a bunch of 3D printers, we have, uh, we have laser cutters, we have fancy um, tools. Now I'll show you the slide later. And, and the, the, Sixth, uh, fifth day, uh, we have business synthesis day, and then the, the last day uh, is the design process exercise. We try to combine all everything you learn, and then this is the exercise day. You try the combat training. Okay, I've tried. I've trained you with like kicks, punches, and ducking and everything. Now there's a combat training at the end. Right. Okay? So this is um, the explicit explanation of design thinking. So these are the summary of the. Day. So in the design thing, it's empathetic and focuses on what people really value. Okay, that's design thinking. And then system thinking, and it's, yes, of course, it's a part of systems engineering, or in systems engineering is a part of it. It's about understanding the elements, the, uh, the components, and also how they are interrelated and behave as a system. Okay, so I like. You know, I like to quote that in, in the system thinking or systems engineering, we always say system has to be designed as a system, okay? Because just putting together a bunch of elements does not give you a system, all right? System has to be designed, system has to be planned, so that it will become a system. And then you break down into elements, all right? So one of the things that we talk about, and then business synthesis, uh, we talk a lot about analytical techniques, and I know those who are from business background, you already know a lot of frameworks, a lot of, you know, maybe a lot of chart. But all these analytical techniques of business, business and finance are truly powerful when it's combined with synthetical mindset. So we're using this analytical and synthetical as a, as a two words that's pretty important. Because what do you analyze if you don't have a thing to analyze? All right, you have to have an idea to analyze, right, to, to utilize your tools. So analytical techniques are, you know, are, are the best one combined with the synthetical mindset. Okay, I want to do this. I should be doing that, okay? Then you can analyze what you have thought, your insights, so that you can create the robust business thoughts and business model. So this is the, the focus. And then prototyping testing is a, is a little aside to the three pillars, design thinking, system thinking, business synthesis. It kind of applies to all three pillars. Prototyping tested, testing is the attitude I want all of you to have. An important activity to find the true value that you want to focus as early as possible in the design process. Okay? You don't want to be sitting in your lab or office for three months trying to plan and draw out all the picture and you go out there and find, oh, this is not it. Okay? I want you to try it early as possible. That's the best way you learn when you're first, in the, in, yeah, when you're trying this for the first time, okay? And prototyping should always be followed by testing, okay? So I'm talking to uh, folks in engineering. Engineer, you know, you think you know about prototyping, right? I used to do a lot of prototyping in Honda, but that's not a prototyping that we're talking about, talking here. Because um, you, we create prototype to test whether we're thinking in the right way. Okay, but prototype I'm talking here is that you prototype and you test it. You don't test it, you test it with your potential customers, okay, or potential um, appreciators, right? Okay, so you bring that to them. You don't present them, okay, you actually bring them. Bring it to them and let them play with it, okay? Don't give them 30 minute lecture of what you brought to them, okay? But just give it to them and see how they respond. All right? I know your prototype is not complete. I know your prototype is just a part of your final solution. But still, you need to test it. Okay? Not just testing the prototype itself, but testing what whether value can be created but or not. Okay, that's something you're testing. Okay? 
you're not just testing the functionality, but you're not testing the how it's built, but you're testing whether it can really create the value. So these are the two, these are the mindset that kind of fits together with all of this. Okay? So that's the focus. And so this is more about me talking about the intensive uh, workshop, trying to get you ready for project-based learning. Once you're ready, now uh, the project-based learning starts. So this is the basic project framework because, you know, we don't give you, you know, we don't just say, hey, go out and do something, all right? Because it's only three months. We try to structure it. We, we try to help you so that you organize yourself in three, three uh, months. So these are the four basic milestones, okay? So problem definition. Like I said, we don't give you a problem. You define your problem. We'll give you scope, okay? And ideation. We'll talk about many ideation techniques, even today in the workshop. And architect. Now you need to understand, okay, how should I build this thing? Okay? And then you want to, of course, think about the business around it. And, of course, if you have done any, any project in the past, this never comes in linear way, right? Always iteration happens. And probably, sometimes, you don't start from here. You just have an idea, right? You're in the shower, you say, oh, Eureka, right? So it's OK. It doesn't matter where you start. But when you have an idea, you want to understand, OK, I have an idea. What problem is this idea solving? It's important because you know, it, it's asking yourself, oh, OK, what is the value that this idea is creating? It's the same as asking you what's the you know, problem definition. So, and of course, not only these four things will help you, but you need to do a lot of research, you probably need to do a lot of analysis, of course, and a lot of other things, too. But we will try to you know, follow this structure in the three months project-based learning. Okay? So it's not just, you know, we just you know, open race, it's just we will try to guide you through three months. Okay? And for today, we can't do this, we can't do all of, all of uh, all of this in, in, a, in an afternoon. So we have you know, trimmed down a lot of things and this is what we're doing today. So here's what you're experiencing today. We're, we're going to do some of the problem definition using a technique called value graph and then the ideation, brainstorming. I know you've probably done this, but I'll, I'll show you the proper way to do brainstorming or effective way to do brainstorming. And then for architecting and business synthesis part, uh, there's a technique called customer value chain analysis um, created by Stanford, and we have a very close relationship with Stanford and MIT, so we uh, do this um, in our school. So I will, I will introduce you to three tools, tool sets, but I will, I'll be very careful to not only talk about the tool set, but I'll try to cooperate with the, the, the mindset okay, behind this. So this is what you'll be doing today. So we have, um, I don't know, we, have, we can go maybe five or ten more minutes. And I want one of your people to talk about us. And uh, yeah, why don't you come up and while she, she's walking. You know what? She was actually in this room a year ago. She hated me to cook this up right here. So February 20th. So it's less than a year that we had her here. And then, so she was right around there. See, she's like so excited to talk about Things. So she was here, and it's so nice to have her uh, you know, as, as a part of us now. And so this is just so that we, you know, I don't just leave you in the blank, but these are the things that I kind of wanted her to talk about. And of course, in addition to this, uh, she will talk about her experience. So Aisha, can you? Yes. Okay, so hope you are feeling the excitement. But first, I want to ask you a question. Are you guys fired up? <laughs> <laughs> are you fired up? Uh, okay, so I was lucky enough to get selected last year and there were three very important key takeaways. Uh, the first was, um, okay, so all of you who studied entrepreneurship or participated in the plan, you, you guys know that we concentrate more on the implementation part because we know when we, have, when we do the presentation what follows. We know what is going to come as for the Q&A. So we are very prepared with the implementation part. But at KO, what I learned was the ideation part is equally important. So the intensive workshop, as Kim said, they were really intensive. They started from 9.30 a.m. 
and they were supposed to get over by 5.30 but they got over by 6.30 and during social life by 9.30. <laughs> but we never knew where the time went because we were so engrossed in doing the work and it was so much fun because they were constantly learning. And one thing that they concentrate a lot on is iteration, the process of iteration. That is repeating the same thing again and again to optimize it, think of new solutions and to just, I, I know you won't understand it, but there's not enough time to explain it. But in my period, we started the first day with bringing your smile to work and we left with making your work smile at you. So it's completely changed. And I know you might not be understanding the box because you actually need to do it to understand what your box is and then think outside. But once you start doing it, you will learn. You will learn a lot. Uh, the second thing was I interacted with a lot of people. As Ken said, in my PBR team itself, I, 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 I didn't know until yesterday that my colleague, like my team member, was 45 years old. I never knew that. <laughs> when he told me yesterday, I was like, really? But it does not feel that way. And I worked with people from 11 different nationalities. So the intensive workshop days, there were around 60 participants. Yeah. There were 50, 60 participants. So like you guys are sh made to change, sh to shuffle and change tables. Every day you were supposed to sit with different people. So I worked with an Egyptian, a Mexican, a Brazilian, an Iranian, uh, Malaysia, Thai, uh, Indonesia, Colombia, and the list just goes on. And so you learn a lot about their cultures, their perspectives. They were working at IBM, the innovation man, <laughs> Hitachi, Coca-Cola, <coughs> Nestle. And there some of our students, PhD students, uh, entrepreneurs, designers. So it's a really wide class that I think, and class profile. So you, and I was the youngest. So you constantly learn because there's a lot of areas of improvement. Um, one more thing that I feel is very important is the resources and the networking that you get. The resources, as we said, the Edge Lab, oh my god, it is crazy. We would just sit at the Edge Lab all day. They have the laser printer, the textile printer, the 3D printer. Uh, we got to meet the 3D printer developer in Japan. Uh, he was invited at one of our social nights. We met the one and only space consultant in the world. So he is a Japanese and he, we were lucky enough that these guys invited him to interact with us. We met an aquarium designer. Have you ever even thought about meeting an aquarium designer and what perspectives are there in her mind, what goes on behind the scenes. Never, like, for me it was completely new. I'm traveling. I, so never miss an opportunity to travel because there's so much to learn. Uh, one more thing is I have friends now and family all around the world. So networking is very important. And not just for networking, business related purposes, but just as family. So you meet them and it's so much fun because you learn about their cultures as well. For us, something something that we think is unbelievable, how can we do it? Like this is not correct or traditional. It is normal for somebody else. And that happened. I realized something over there. And I was like, okay, that's normal to you. And then I said, there's nothing wrong in it being normal. It is. It's just that we are, the way we are brought up, we never get that new perspective. And what I want to conclude by saying is, you're going there to learn and not to study. So always remember that and keep an open mind and absorb it. Because you must live like a Japanese in Japan. <laughs> yeah. And don't worry about food because I actually put on weight. <laughs> Once I came back. About food or language, you will have PAs and professors and uh, the staff members, everyone is very good, very nice and very helpful. And very loving, most important, very loving. So yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Jenny. Okay, the power went out, but I think I ran out of my slides too. So it's okay. So um, she'll be um, around with us all day. So if you have a, a chance to talk to her, you can ask her a question and uh, she'll probably answer it. She will never answer how much weight she put on. <laughs> she will never answer that question, but that's okay. And I had just one another slide to show you, but that was about the interview. Um, so like I said, okay, this is the end of the, the morning session. Okay, at the end of the workshop, which was starting in about an hour after the lunch, um, after that, I will, um, it, it, takes, it takes about two or maybe three hours. 
to, to probably you know get together and process um, what we gained from the from the workshop, and we will select probably four, maximum five people to come to the interview. Okay, we'll send you the email, and uh, I want you to. Can you try to put that back on? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, okay. Yeah, and I want you to respond to the email that we sent you because, so that we know that you got the email. All right. So if we send you an email to come to the interview, please answer. Just say okay or yes or whatever. All right. <coughs> and uh, yes. And again, the last slide, the, the really last slide was the, the URL. Download the URL. But I'll just put yeah, put it up there. I'll just write it. I'll just write down the, the URL somewhere on the on the board so that you can you know I don't know take a take a photo or take a memo so that you can download it later today. Okay. All right. So let me. Sorry, time. Oh, it's twelve. All right. So before we go to the lunch break, um, any question? I know you want to ask many questions, but we can do that later on. But if you have a question to ask now, I can answer that. Do you have any question regarding? Program regarding us. Good? Yeah. Uh, sir, I have a question yeah. about the innovative uh, design thinking style. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what I learned today was when we are uh, trying to think innovatively, so we are not, we are actually creating a value. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, when we talk about innovation, we are actually looking at the sustainability part. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I just had a question regarding that if we are uh, trying to think innovatively and in our process, do we also have to uh, keep it at the back of our mind that we our process and the solution that we bring is innovative and sustainable? Yes. That is my question. Yes, I think so. Okay. But it's very difficult to sh you know try to shoot two targets at the same time, right? So the you know we, we try to maybe we're I don't know if we know the secret recipe I won't be talking here I will be making fortune flying my Maserati somewhere, but you know we're we're trying to you know come up with a methodology to approach this. So the, the as as of now what we understand is that okay let's start shooting for innovative idea and then try to check whether that could be sustainable okay. whether whether it could be appreciated by how many people. Yeah. But exactly what you said, you always have that in the back of your mind yes. or in front of your mind or whatever. You're always Think, constantly thinking about, okay, who might be appreciating this? What are the problems that I'm always solving? Yeah. So, like I said, it's iterative. It's very iterative. It's not never linear. Okay. Don't think, okay, I got this done. I got this done. I got this done. Okay. Some jobs are like this. All right. Trust me. Some jobs are like this, but not this time. If you're trying to come up with something new, if you want to try to you know, change the world in, in your way, then it's iterative. So you think you know your problem, and you think you have the best idea ever, and you think about the implementation, and you say, oh, okay, I realized that my problem wasn't that. I should have changed, I should modify, or I should pivot, right? That's the word that you use in business. I should pivot to this angle so that my competency or whatever I have, my resource, makes the value the most, right? So the iteration happens, but I, with the first step, when you're stepping out of your box and thinking innovative, you always want to have that in the back of your head. And but don't be too afraid that whether you whether you have the, the best innovative idea and it's also sustainable, don't get too be intimidated by that concept. It iterates. Okay. okay? Yeah. It's a good question. Okay. Must assume you're hungry. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's take a, a lunch break. So it's a uh, twelve. Five minutes past twelve. So let's come back at five minutes past one. Okay? I'll see you at one five here and in your seats. Okay? Or and okay. So the name text. So I want to know your name and if you have a very long name, I'd love to ask you to write down your nickname <laughs> because that's much easier. So if you have a nickname then we can you know identify you better. I'd like, I'd like to see that too. Okay? All right, so I'll see you in an hour. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
So I'm not saying this is the only thing you need to know. I just want you to try to add this to whatever you have already. Okay? And I want you to gain experience to think outside of the box in a kind of a structured way. Okay? And what do we expect, what do we expect in, for, from you is to be creative. Okay? Aim for innovative outcome or output and contribute to your team with your uniquenesses. Okay? And have fun. And this is what I do not expect. Be like super critical of each other. I don't expect that. And land on boring easy outcome or output. And turning off your logical part of your brain. And so, yes, I do ask you to become creative and, you know, um, um, be innovative. But turn your logical part of your brain, keep it on. Okay? Because it's a balance. It's almost like if, if your left brain is more logical brain and the right brain is a, your creative brain, it's, it's not. But people say this, right? It's almost like turning onto the left and to the right and to the left again to the right again. Okay? You don't stay in one mode for like days because you'll be lost, right? You have to help your other brain with the other brain. Okay? So don't turn it off, okay? Let's do like fun discussion, like, you know, insight seeking, exploration, and then say, oh, okay, we, we think logically, maybe that one looks very interesting, <coughs> or, you know, things like this. If you think you're stuck in the logical mode, you can turn back on your innovative or creative mode. So that's like the, the mode switches that I kind of want to ask you to try to do. Okay, just try. I know it's going to be your first time. I don't expect you to do everything perfect, but I, I want to see you trying. Okay? So have fun. So why collaborate? So if you're doubting about collaboration, here's me explaining the science behind this. Okay? This is from um, the science, the, the, you know the journal, the, the scientific journal. And it's in 2008, they found the evidence for collective intelligence. Okay, factor in the performance of human groups. So here's a highlight. General collective intelligence factor that explains the group's performance. Okay, there's a, there's a fact, okay, the group performance increases, increases after a proper group work. That's what it says. They conducted, okay, uh, summary, summary, they conducted a, 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 the scientific experiment uh, with 700 people, almost 700 people, all right? After proper, properly prepared group work, the average of um, the average of the test, certain tests they conducted, this average increases, the average point increases after properly prepared group work, meaning you gain the intelligence. Okay, through the group work, okay? So, and, but not just any group work, but it has to be, um, you know, it has to satisfy some of the situations. So, correlated with the average of social sensitivity of the group members. Meaning, you have to be a social person, meaning you can talk and listen, okay, to the people around you. It's correlated to that. And also, um, distribution of conversational turn taking. Meaning if you have five people or four people, it's better if you take turns in conversation. So everyone's talking. It's not just one people dictating the discussion. Okay? And proportion of females in the in the uh, group. It's interesting, isn't it? It's a it's a statistic magic I would say. Because they're trying to, you know, see this is statistical magic because female is in general is more um, socially uh, sensitive. It's, it's a statistic. All right. So doesn't mean you need women in your group. It has you need somebody or you all of you. It's better if you are socially sensitive, meaning you can you know see how people are doing and like you know listen sometimes and talk to them. You know maybe ask questions or you know answer their questions. So this is the very interesting um, science work that have proven us that, hey, doing something together makes sense. Okay? But don't forget, if you're not doing this the right way, meaning that they call it C factor, it's a collaboration or cooperation, they call it C factor. If you don't care or you don't pay attention to C factor, there's no meaning of getting together five brains. Okay? So if you don't care about this, go do it yourself. 
That's better off, okay? Return on investment is better because you're investing five people here. Why not, you know, make best out of it, all right? Then care about the C factor, all right? So that's what I want to try to do. And here's another very interesting chart from Harvard Business Review. It's from 2004. It's, it's old. Maybe some of you are not born. Yes. So here's the, the team um, member discipline. So on the left, you have a very unique discipline team. So your team has all business person or engineering person. On the right, your team has diverse uh, discipline. So now you're on the right. Okay. So here's the outcome. This is done by um, the researching on the, the patent on a US company. Okay? The value of innovation of their outputs. All right? So the alignment of team member disciplines, if, if, if they're a unique team, their output are equally, um, how do I say, equal quality many times. So your average is high. Okay? And if you get a diverse team, look at the average line, it goes down. All right, so you get garbage ideas. But that's not the point. We're aiming for this. This did happen. All right, so if you have a high, diver uh, high diversity discipline team, you may be, you may be getting the breakthrough ideas, breakthrough outputs. Okay, so this chart is you know, there, there can be a lot of explanation on this. But the, the, the explanation I really like is that when you are in the diverse team, okay, of course you're aiming for this. But the thing is, you need to allow this garbage idea. You need to be, you know, understanding, hey, okay, because it's a diverse team, we'll, we'll get this. And trust me, you don't see, this one is not shining itself. You need to find this little dot. It's covered in this dirt. Okay, so this little diamond is not shining itself. You need to find it, and I say you need to polish it. So don't think you will automatically get to this point. Okay, once you have a diverse team, your discussion become chaotic. Your discussion become a little out of scope sometimes, and so many garbage idea will you know come out. But you need to understand. Hey, we'll look for that. This idea that is the outcome outcome of this you know, multi discipline so I think this chart is really interesting. And if you want to go further, I've already, I have some, yeah, those are the sources. So if you want to check out their um, articles and uh, literatures, go ahead and do it. And okay, so this is the background information for you before you start the workshop. And here's the workshop. The context is healthcare. All right, so I'll just give you the context. Okay, so let's just pretend you're all the teams, okay, new teams. You are a team of thinking about launching a startup business in a healthcare domain. Okay? But your team is very young. You just started this. Okay? And your scope is global, have, but have not decided what to focus on. You're like still very, very vague. But you know that you want to do some kind of healthcare. And you're in the phase of developing your concept. Okay? I know I'm just giving you this and put it in your mouth, but just pretend you are like a new team, a bunch of different students or different people from different backgrounds trying to aid something like this, all right? During the healthcare domain. Okay, here's what you do. Divergent thinking, okay? So meaning you stretch, you expand, explore your idea of it, thinking. And you want to take, a, take advantage of the diversity of the team. And, but at the same time, sometimes, I, I, will, I want you to try to do the conversion thinking. So you summarize, you abstract, organize, structuralize, something like this, okay? And of course, when you're converging some ideas, you, want, you still want to take the advantage of diversity. And I want all of you to work in interdisciplinary mode and try to find insights, okay? We're not looking for the best idea at the end of the workshop, but I, mean, I will ask you, so, any insights? Okay, any insights? So I'll talk about the insights, but don't try too hard to get to the idea, but if you get some insights that may lead you to a better idea, then that's fine. So tr let's try to find insights uh, through this process. And let's say, let's think in of it, right? <coughs> in so, what does insight taste like? Okay, this is me uh, putting together this slide, but 
So, in your insight, it's a finding, right? It's a finding through the process, finding through the discussion, finding through some, throwing some um, post-it notes on the, on, the, on the floor or on the, the wall, and you, you find things, okay? And this is what you're looking for. Something that's unusual, but very interesting. Okay? Or unfamiliar, but convincing. And try, let's try to avoid, you know, for, for today, let's try to avoid something usual, but and interesting and familiar and convincing. Why? Because that's, everyone is after these things, right? You want to go something different from everyone, right? So let's try to find something unusual that you found out of the interaction between different disciplines, different discussions, and say, hey, that's like, that's crazy, but interesting. Or, hey, this sounds stupid at the glance, but when we think about it, if we put our heads around it, maybe it's, it's convincing that it's some, there's some clues in it. Okay? So let's try to you know, find something like that. Okay? So for today, choose your insight color. Okay? Whenever you find something, it might be in an insight or candidate for insight, don't put your stake too high on insight. If you think you find something, just put it down on the, the insight color. Choose your insight color. One of Yellow, you have too many yellows, so except yellows, yeah, green, whatever, yeah. Just choose the insight color. And distribute that to, to your buddies, okay? Break that into smaller pieces and then give it to all of them, everyone in your team. Okay? So if you think you find it, you know, put it down as an insight. Okay? Yeah, just break it. Okay. All right, so, and again, this is a revisit, but this is the basic project framework that we used in the EDGE program, and trust me, this is not something that I want you to really, um, this is like, a, I don't want to brace you into the, the model, but this is some, this is a guideline, okay, so that other, so that you don't get lost in three months, right, and today, we're doing these three things. For your problem definition process, um, I'll introduce you to uh, a technique called value graph that will help you to understand uh, your purposes and some of your alternative ideas. In then ideation, well, I'll, uh, I'll take you through the brainstorming process and then I'll, I'll give you some tips so that you will become better off brainstorming. And then the CDCA is another technique so that you can think about how you might realize your idea into a business or a chain of value, all right? So these are three things that you will be doing today. And hopefully, you know, maybe a combination of these three or maybe one of these tools can help you anyway, uh, somewhere in your personal project or maybe your academic activity in the future. And while you're doing this, I know you're, you will be creating these outputs, but you know, along, along, the, along the way, if you notice anything, then write it down, okay? Because these will be a great keys, great uh, hints for, for your team or your, your future self, okay? And so this is what we'll be doing today. Okay, so again, another condition, okay? I want all of you to try to just, you know, remember this. You are a project-based learning team for the KO program, okay? So just pretend. And working on innovative healthcare solution business development. And I know this goal is too vague for this four hour, three, three hours. So I'm giving you a little bit more information. You have a vague consensus of life log concept. Life log meaning, you know, you're logging your life activity. For example, like Apple Watch considered to be a, a part of a life log, right? You're logging like your um, biometrics and you're logging or some other things. Maybe Facebook is part of your life log, right? If you're a Facebook people, you just Facebook everything. If you look back at your Facebook from last year, you know what you've been, you were doing 365 years, 365 days, right? So, you know, you have the idea, okay, we're on the healthcare domain, and we agree that, hey, we want to go somewhere life log, all right? I'm just giving you this because in the real project-based learning, I don't, but Today it's a, like a demo, so I'm just giving you this. So please understand that your team is like that. And then now you want to explore the solution space for a lifelong healthcare solution. 
right? So you're trying to explore, okay, what might be a uh, solution or what can be a, a candidate. You're just exploring. You're not just, you're tr not trying to nail it down to one thing. You're kind of exploring, all right? And along the way, I want you to try to find some insight that not here, we're not iterating today, we're just going step by step. But if you're iterating, these insights will help you to iterate, okay? So, the first step is the value graph. We'll try to create um, a value graph, this graph, and then that'll help you to define your problem, okay? And I'll, I'll tell you how. All right, so let's begin, the value graph. So value graph looks like this. Okay, and but we're just doing the upper half, upper half. And what it's really doing is that it's a uh, there's two viewpoints, purposes and alternative ideas. So the mix of two viewpoints and higher purposes and alternative ideas are connected in, in lines and values. And it's invented in uh, Stanford University. We have a very close relationship with uh, the mechanical engineering department where they run D school and um, the ME310, ME317 department notice. Um, their innovation design, innovation um, product design, and things like that. So we're in collaboration with them. And then this is the from uh, one of the professors there. Oh, he passed, uh, passed away in 2009, but it's, it was his. Okay, so the value graph, just a brief introduction to this. So it's, it's from value engineering, and then it's a technique from there, and it allows the design team to systematically review their objectives and propose design at various stages of product development. So that's how it's described. And technique developed based on the functional structure analysis from value engineering, and what it does is it associates values, functions, and concepts, and visualizes the interrelationship. And originally used for the product and service design, but it could be a lot applied to many other things. It's just a uh, background information. And then, why value graph is important? So, the value graph is to think beyond your first idea. So, maybe some engineering people might uh, resonate with this better, but maybe many of you can resonate with this. So, you're, you're kind of haunted with the first idea, right? Because at Sometime after you think about different ideas, maybe it's time to let go of your first idea and to move on, right? But you're like, you're so in love with your first idea. You sometimes need to kill your death, right? But it's hard, isn't it? Because you have already some, spent some time with this idea. You have memories with this idea. <laughs> it's very difficult to kill him or her. But sometimes you need to kill it. You need to move on. But it's hard. So value graph sometimes help you to move on, all right, from the old relationship. So the first idea, first design or first idea can pump. So often holds on to the first design developing, developing early stage and cannot start the first design even when it may be necessary to discard. So to, to, to move on, not just moving on, but you know, move on with reasons, all right? You need to consider the higher level purposes. You need to do meta thinking and set your mind free from the for the better option. So ask yourself, why do we need this? Why do we need this idea? Question, question to clarify the higher level purposes and identify different levels of purposes to help generate alternative creative design options by thinking how the purpose could be satisfied. So here's an example. Okay, this is not what you'll be creating. Okay, don't get it wrong, but this is not what you're creating. But this is the um, kind of a similar diagram that is um, introduced in the in the book written by professor from um, Stanford. And this diagram was is the basis of this value graph. So I would just like to introduce you to the basis. So. Okay, imagine this Professor Ishii, he's a, he was a Japanese uh, and then professor at KO, uh, not for, uh, Stanford. And him, an actual story, him and somebody from Apple was discussing. Okay? And the, the somebody from Apple, the engineer from Apple came to Professor Ishii and asked him, hey, we're working on a cooling fan. Do you know a cooling fan? Maybe this thing has a cooling fan. It tries to, uh, here, it tries to push out the, the heated air outside so that it the inside stays on, the, on the, the same temperature or stable temperature so that it doesn't burn itself, right? So 
these engineers came to Professor Ishii and asked, hey, we're trying to you know, make, a, make a cooling fan better and, I don't know, more effective. And the discussion started, okay? So I'll just pretend the, the, the communication. So they were thinking about cooling fan and asked Professor. But Professor never answered the cooling fan question, but he asked differently, different way. So why do you need cooling fan for? Okay. He didn't know how cooling fan, but he, he said yes, why? And then the Apple engineer asked, uh, was thinking and said, oh, okay, well, we want to generate airflow. That's why we want the cooling. Okay. And then the professor says, okay, I understand. You want to generate the airflow? Then yes, cooling fan is an option. But you know that you can just induce convection. This is engineering terms. You can just let the air flow you know, without fan. All right? If you set it right, then it happens. And to set it right, you can have a range PC that your circuit board vertically, then it happens. Or you can have more holes on your body. Then this convection happens. So he just pointed out the alternative, right? Based on the higher purpose. But he never stopped. Professor never stopped there. He professor asked the Apple engineer, so okay, I understand you want to generate the airflow, but why is it for? Why do you want the airflow? And then the engineer asked, well, we want to remove the heat. Then, now we can find a more alternative. To remove the heat, yes, generating airflow is one thing. But water cool the device is another option. Forget about air. We can, how about water? Okay? Now, alternative. But they never stop. So, why do you want to remove the heat anyway? Why? Then, they said, um, removing heat is not the ultimate. Goal. The, the, the goal higher is maintaining the temperature inside. Just imagine what, like things like this thing. Okay? Maintaining the temperature inside is important. To do so, I can remove the heat inside, that's one option, or just reduce the wattage of the device. So reduce the heat generated inside. That's an option, right? That's a valid option. Or this is the joke that he wrote down in his book. Ship the device to Antarctica. Your problem solved, right? So you know, he's saying if the context changed, your problem never exists. Yeah? So, maintaining temperature, he never stopped there either. And he asked, so why do you want to maintain temperature anyways from the device? And the Apple engineer said, oh, I want to enhance reliability and prolong the life of the device. That's the goal. That's the goal. And then, maintaining temperature is one, one option, but hey, how about getting the better chips inside, better um, circuit board inside? That will that will give you this. You forget about the heat, right? So you see how this discussion developed. So these are layers of purposes, higher purposes. They're carefully developed, and then they found so many alternatives to think about. So, okay, we're not trying to just think about the cooling fan. You may be assigned to do the cooling fan. Think about you know you're in Apple. You may be assigned to the cooling fan, but Steve Jobs doesn't want you to work on the cooling fan. Right? He wants you to work on this. Yeah. So imagine yourself. You may be stuck here, but your solution is not only here, but you can choose these to get to here. Right? So understanding your higher purposes gives you, you know, bigger scope, bigger scope to discuss. So bigger thing, you know, things to modify. Right? So this is the, the basic behind value graph. So this is, again, this is not a value graph, but this is the concept behind it. <coughs> so this is what value graph looks like, and this is what I want you to try to do. Alright? So here's an example of me, of us creating lifelong shoes. Okay? Just imagine there's a shoe, it's your idea, let's say, life, there's a lifelong shoes, and I'm trying to create the value graph. So value graph has two things. One is purposes, just like we did, and then alternative option. Okay, let's go one more time. So I start from here, lifelong shoes, and I ask myself, okay, why do I want my lifelong shoes? And here, to keep track of walking exercise, okay? Let's say this was the purpose, and lifelong shoes is one option, but smartphone, maybe can do the job, or do manually, just take notes, like just like my mom, okay? She never leaves smartphone, she just writes down. So, yeah, do manually, or, Live shoes might help. Okay? So that's my one purpose that I can think of. 
And here's, I was thinking, I was discussing this with my team and found out, okay, to present to the others that you are the health concerned person, you have the life of the shoes, you're walking around and people say, oh, that guy has a life of the shoes. He's very health concerned, okay? That's one purpose, right? Like, you know, if you're like a gadget person, why do you buy gadget? Do you kind of want to show off that you, you're, you're the geek? You're the one who's like cut to the edge, right? So, yeah, and then, to, if this was the purpose, other healthcare <coughs> stuff can satisfy him or her, right? Not your life watch shoes. Maybe Apple Watch is more satisfying for somebody with this purpose. So you can have multiple purposes, of course, right? Not, not just one purpose is uh, uh, the ultimate purpose. And then I found the other one after the discussion. To present to the others that you are an early adapter, just like I said, right? So I just found, okay, Life log shoes have three purposes, okay? To keep track of walking exercise, to present to the others that you're health concerned, and to present to the others that you are early in happy. And of course, if you're following this purpose, your new life log shoes might serve that purpose, but other gadgets can serve that purpose too. So the things in blue are alternatives. <coughs> maybe your comp competition, maybe you're somebody to co cooperate, right? And I don't stop at the first level, I go up. So, to keep track of walking exercise, why? What is the higher purpose of this? To sustain health. Yeah. And uh, to sustain health, to keep track of walking exercise, that might be an option. But the other option is not keep track and just do it. Right? And just like many people do. They don't care how much mile they run. They just run every day. Okay? Yeah, that's an option. Right? So, in here, keep track of the walking exercise and higher purpose can be to sustain motivation to continue the healthy lifestyle. And that can be driven from here too, to present to the other that you are a health concerned person. And the higher purpose could be here, right? And alternatives, just, you know, self-motivate, you know, just self-disciplined discipline, discipline person. Or get a coach. Instead of, you know, doing any of this, just get a coach, personal coach, he'll she take care of you. So these are options. And up here, the higher purposes of these two could be to have a reputation that you're a cool person, right? You know, because early adopter, health concerned person is not a purpose. You want to be considered as a cool person. That's more higher purpose. And improve what we wear can be an option, right? And I'll go up higher. And then, of course, to get a date. <laughs> OK, here, you know, you need to be very human-centered. Right? Why do we do this? Right? Why do we do this? If we're talking about somebody in teenager, then maybe that's the goal. And of course you can go extreme, yeah, plastic surgery. If you're like a lady, if you really need this, yes, in, in Korea, in, in, I think it's happening in Japan. Plastic surgery is a common thing. Is it here too? Yeah? No? Not yet? It's coming. <laughs> yeah. They'll find their market. Yeah, because, you know, woman has this desire to become more beautiful. Even Cleopatra, she had that too, right? So, so here, to sustain health, to live long, and of course, to live long, this could be an option, or see a good doctor, right? So, see, I, I know I, I know, I kind of took the, the stupid example. You see stupid example, but it makes sense, right? It makes sense that this person might have these purposes, and the other blues can serve this purpose. Right? So that's how you find out. And yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, it's okay. But, uh, how, how do you know the, where do you go on the graph? Yeah. How how high do you go? Uh, good you go? question. Okay. If you just match, if you continue this, where do you think you'll get to? Okay, I can give you an example. I've done with many nationality people. You end up saying for the bank. <laughs> for a uh, piece of the world. Because then it ends up because you know happiness to the world. It, yeah, no matter which country that they're from, you end up saying Yeah, for the mankind. <coughs> so maybe you can stop at some point. Because you know, understanding oh this is for the piece of the globe, but it doesn't make much you know, doesn't make much uh, help to the project. But yeah, you can stop. But it depends. It depends on where you start. Because this is the device, right? Mm -hmm. If you put like a policy here, like a you know some kind of policy, then the abstraction level is high enough already. So yeah, I, we've done this 
Because you know that 2020 we have Olympic in Tokyo, mm -hmm. right? We, and we have some, you know, very um, early stage conceptual design with some, some people, like, like the Panasonic, Toshiba, they're big company, they're helping the Olympics. And they're after some, um, some high, uh, how do I say, the big project associated with the Olympics. So what, what we put there is a successful Olympic. What? And, and then you ask the same question, what's the purpose? Successful Olympic? Is it Olympic? No, that's not the purpose, right? Because they want to be successful in economics, right? They want to enhance economics. They want the attention from the world. They want to show what we have, right? It's like a big, like a seven market, right? So, you know, we put that up here and then we kind of kept on doing that. So it depends on where you are, but you just do several layers and then find out, oh, okay, this is good enough. So, and, okay, yeah. Sorry, it's okay. But if we start uh, to do a menu graph for yeah. one idea, but if we stop middle way, you know, we, we don't have any idea about how to go about to the next step. So can we can we just jump to another idea and start to do that again? Or? Well, sorry to answer, when, when answer this way. Depends. Okay. Yes. Sometimes you create value graph quick in the first day, and you just leave it there, and you do work on some other thing, and you go look back and say, hey, maybe we have update on this. Or yeah. So. It, it's really nice, it's a visualization, right? It, it's not the final solution. It's not anything is, you know, like final, all right? It's not anything is not, it's a living document, you update. You keep updating through the project, through the discussion. So it's often the case you re, 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 like, uh, modify these things and reuse, this is the version one, version two, version three, that happens very often. Uh, so then, suppose like, you have a lot of alternatives, yeah. uh, and, uh, which are basically of two lines. So then, shouldn't you uh, modify or customize your base product in order to incorporate it? Yes, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Okay, so now, now you have this. So his question can be, so what about this? We've done it, okay? How do we make good use of it? All right, so here's the, okay, new question arose. Okay, what can be a dif uh, differentiation of a shoe type live blog device. So maybe me looking at somewhere around here, okay? Somewhere around here. There could be smartphone, other healthcare stuff, right? And then thinking, hmm, okay, why is it shoes? We had this idea of shoe life blog, but it doesn't have to be shoes, maybe, right? But what how can we differentiate from the Apple Watch or things like this? This is a new question that we found. Just pretend that you know, you're following our team discussion, okay? This is the question of a row. So this is, I put it on my uh, the inside color. And then this is the inside that my team got. So getting a date packaging, okay? So when I'm selling this product, maybe I should put it in a getting a date packaging, yeah? And branding may be suitable for a certain age group. Maybe I can sell this live vlog shoes. Those boys who really want to get a date, but not getting one. But yes, <laughs> but yes, maybe I think you know, package it, sell it in that way. It might be successful. All right, so that was an insight. Yeah. So this insight was like giving me some idea about my segmentation, right, or marketing. So and so much more to come. Right. So not just creating this. This that's not the point. But the point is getting insight out of this. Right. Just, I think I'm answering your question. Yeah. So what's the good use of this? Many way, many way. You can expand your idea, or you can say, hey, I'm kind of not liking the shoe idea anymore. I'm liking that idea more. Or, you know, that can happen. All right? So it's a tool. Tool doesn't tell you what to do, right? The tool is a tool. You need to tell the tool what to do, right? So use the tool and, you know, learn new things, and you, you find next step, you find another step, all right? So, got the idea. Now let's try it. Let's create the value graph. Discuss and create the value graph upper half for life log. All right. So what I'm asking, instead of life log, shoot, just put life log. So a little bit more abstract. Okay? It can be abstract. I know it's hard to discuss, but I'll, I'll make you try to discuss. All right. Put life log here, and take your yellow post-it notes to write your higher purposes. It's more abstract every step. All right. And then take the other color, not the inside color, the other color, to write down your alternative options. 
And try to use the black pen and the, uh, the blue pen so that you can, at a glance, you can see, hey, this is my alternative idea. These are my higher purposes. All right? So discuss and create a value graph of the life log. Put the life log here. Try to create something like this. You can have multiple purposes, and you probably have multiple purposes. All right? And so you can think, you can discuss something like this. So whose purpose? This is the person who's using, or, you know, you can think about some of the things. And other purposes, in the, in the example, I had three. You can have, I don't know, more, three, two. And alternative option, you, I want you to try to discuss on that every step. Yeah, OK. And more abstract purposes. So if you go up higher, it gets more abstract. And, it, and you ended up saying, for the mankind, or something like that. You, you find out. Yeah, OK. And so it's just structuralizing and visualizing your purposes and alternative options to expand the solution space for whatever you have down here. You get the concept. Good. All right. Now, well, OK, so like I explained, this is your whiteboard paper. So make sure you're writing on the side with the logo, because that's the only coated side. All right? All right. And then you have plenty of uh, post-it notes. So, so the yellow, you have the most. So I want, maybe it's better you use yellow for the higher purposes and use the other color for um, alternatives. OK? Can we give it, a, give it a shot? All right. Let's give it a shot. So I will timer. I will just set the timer. It's not rough. I don't want to rush you, but you know, we need to get it done before it's midnight, right? <laughs> yes, at, at some moment. So, um, okay, yeah. I will give you 25 minutes. Let's do that. Let's do 25 minutes, and let's try to complete your value graph. And I will. We will be walking around. I'll be walking around. So don't hesitate to stop me. If you, have, if you have a question, if you're thinking of something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, I'll try to clarify life log. It's vague. I know it's vague. It's like logging your life in many ways. So, like I said, your Apple logger, who has iPhones? iPhones, there's a healthcare thing inside, right? It's checking like how high you went up the stairs or whatever. That can be your life log. Or a bunch of photos inside your iPhone. That's your life log. You're taking photos every day. You're logging your life. Something that keeps track of your life in many ways. And maybe could be utilized for health. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you still want to say, hey, okay, there are options, but we're choosing this because right, you this reason yourself. You justify yourself. Hey, choose is the better option because if you go through that, go on with different things, it's your problem, right? Yeah, so you need to make a decision. And entrepreneurship is about making decisions. Okay. Like deciding on what to do is deciding on what to do. So whether you go to choose or choose your own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just put down the life box box. And then you're thinking in the healthcare domain, Thank you. 
value chain is uh, six to uh, to make and six to seven days, just take two or three minutes, think on the staff like the food we are taking, let it be a good
Right? Your brain works that way. Okay, so write it down. Okay? Alright, I'll give you 15 minutes to find the insights.
Okay. Even the customized life care is an unnoticed upper purpose that we found. Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, from life lock, to, uh, in the future we can uh, have that uh, choose a person and uh, according to his problems that uh, diseases they are facing. For example, he is a diabetic patient. So they can get to know how much diabetes uh, they are having right currently, uh, how much food, uh, sugar food they should, con uh, they should take. Uh, more and uh, that is what like uh, customers like here. Yes. I, I see. And talking about the collaboration and the collaboration part, life loss is something that we can connect to each and every product, every global product, and uh, and we can we can create value out of it. And we can even create a cloud so cloud storage system that might be helpful in that. And even we can uh, collaborate with something like metro model sites you know, to show. Like in India, uh, similar if two persons have similar disease, then getting married or Alright, thank you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Okay. So yeah, you have just they have, have explained it very well. And and I really like that, you know, they found out this life law can be collaborating with other things so that it serves a better purpose, marriage proposal going successful, right? And so, how, this is how you can read the value graph. Oh, let's read this way. So our life log, this team's life log, is pursuing the marriage proposal going successful, and also successful career, okay? So if you put it this way, this life log concept have more stories now, right? More to build, more to think about, right? Then you will you can go dig in some Google sites talking about how marriage proposal being successful and miserably failing and you know you can follow those stories and think about how your life log idea should be implemented right or successful career and then the life log that's an interesting one right but recently like many successful business person they exercise so hard right they're self disciplined maybe you can poke around this area and find out how this life log concept might be sellable or I mean, uh, uh, fascinating to this successful um, business person. Then you can, you know, you can have a unit price of pretty high that you can sell it to a very successful business person. So yes, those are the idea that can come out. And I really like the, the way you um, described that if you have a diabetes, you, maybe this can help them. And that gives me an idea. Maybe if I was a team member, I come up with, hey, how about collaborating with insurance? Yeah, then maybe we can give out this life log out of whatever service free, and the insurance company pay us. How about that? So you know these can th these can things can come out, and of course, like I said, this isn't final. Okay, this is the first step. You iterate again and again, and again, this is like the very beginning of your conceptualization, and then you gain many findings, right? But it's a lot more you get if you do like in this way. You focus your discussion, you visualize, and sometimes you step back and discuss what you have found. Okay? Good. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, let's hear from one more team, and I want somebody far away from it. So why don't you go down? Okay? If you want to take a look closer, look. Yeah, free, 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 free to come, come nearby. That's okay. Why don't you guys come around here? So again, tell us maybe one or two things interesting about the value graph itself, and tell us one or maybe two interesting insights or findings. Oh. So basically what we did is while making our value graph, we divided it into three tiers. Okay. So, so three layers. Yeah, three layers of discussion took place where first we looked at very generic uh, issues. Like for example, if I'm going out of station, if I'm going out of town, or if I'm if, if I'm probably uh, I'm not feeling well, or if I want to look good. So then these are very general, you know, things that we think of. And then we go to the severity of each and the need of each and every of these things. For example, if I'm ill, if I'm very ill, then depending on the diagnosis, okay, we can come up with uh, you know better problems to deal with it. Then uh, probably we start to you know avoid any of these problems from happening. We can take care of uh, some prevent. We can uh, have some preventive me uh, measures. <coughs> on the other side, there can be this added uh, advantage of having a health conscious uh, you know something to track your health consciousness. 
and uh, you know, and the need to be tech savvy also comes into the picture. You know, and the third tier which achieves all of these are you know eventually you live for a longer period of time. So based on that, what we thought of. So, for example, uh, we thought of the, uh, making a the, the gadget like Jarvis, uh, which I am a people. So, he can track our body, he can uh, take uh, the lo uh, lo logging of our body, and uh, uh, he can maintain everything that go uh, goes into us, what uh, happens to our body, and he can, uh, can maintain everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, next thing we thought of uh, uh, tracker pills, uh, uh, digestive pills. If we digest it, and it uh, gives track. Uh, so probably that bill has a few na uh, nano, uh, some some kind of nanotechnology that keeps track and updates your, uh, you know, uh, supported device, and which can help you, uh, which is a user friendly and can replace the existing tech, and this uh, portability can be used anywhere, and uh, so at the end of the day, you're your own doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. What are the suggestions that you can take without by uh, by reaching to the hospital mm -hmm. in between that? Mm -hmm. What is the prevention suggestion you can take? I see, I see. And so then, yeah, maybe to summarize your discussion, your life log is more towards like collaborating with a hospital or a medical you know yeah, yes. care and trying to bring doctors into your life maybe kind of. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. It's quite different from the marriage proposal. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I see both markets, right? So Again, we started the same, right? We started from the same dot, but we are already growing to different directions. So that's how you grow your concept, okay? That's how you discuss on a high level of abstraction, but still you know, finding interesting things in your, in your discussion. Very good, thank you very much. Okay, so let me wrap up quick and let's take a quick break. Um, okay, so this was the value graph, and then um, when you download, I have some uh, related materials uh, uh, regarding the value graph. So you can read uh, some of the Stanford materials, and there was a lot more to discuss. But yeah, try to remember, so here's what we did, okay? We didn't just discuss randomly, but I told you what to discuss, okay? And kind of how to discuss, visualize discussion, and then that way it helps you to look back what you have discussed, right? Otherwise, it just vaporizes, it just goes away, okay? And but look, by looking at what you have discussed, you can rediscuss, you can rediscover, you can find the thing you kind of slipped out of your hands, right? So that's how you continue your discussion, okay? In a high quality way, in intense and dense way, okay? So that's something that you can pick up and so whenever you have a chance to discuss with your friend in any situation, try to visualize, okay? And trust me, this is my second time in India. In people in India, you like to discuss in air, okay? <laughs> but it's good, it's good, but try to visualize. It'll enhance your discussion, okay? It's enhance your discussion, all right? Good, okay, let's take a break. Um, since that watch is not working, I'll try to timer it, okay? I don't want to pressure you, but let's take a 10 minute break. I don't want you to be back in 10 minutes and leave the stuff like that. You don't, you don't have to erase anything, okay? All right, let's take a 10 minute break. So the first one was intended to do to help you to define your problem. Okay, or explore your concept further. So meaning, okay, I've given you the context, the healthcare, I've given you a initial concept of life law. Now, after your discussion based on the value gap, now you're already thinking, hey, we should go in this direction. We want to focus on people who want to get married, or maybe the more healthcare of domain related. Okay? So you're trying to define your problem, narrow down what you want to focus on. Right? So that's one part of it. But again, it doesn't complete in one stroke. Okay? It does come back several times. And I'm sorry I've given you a few minutes to work on this, but that was it. So now uh, we're going into ideation mode or generating ideas. So of course brainstorming. Okay? 
And before we talk about brainstorming, let me talk about how um, th there are some major, so there are some different approaches to generate ideas. Okay. And there are two large categories. If you go to read books, then they'll show you several different categories. But there are two major categories on ideation majors or methodology. One is free association major, the other is forced association majors. And some of these are, some of um, examples is free association major is, is um, represented by like brainstorming, brain writing, and there's just some other techniques. And course association major is represented by Osborne checklist. If you're in, we're not covering this today, but if you're interested, go Professor Wikipedia, ask him. Okay? Osborne, Osborne is linked to somebody who was uh, very level nine, early 1900s, I guess. And he went research um, on the ideation, and he came up with a bunch of lists. Okay, so force association is basically asking you to okay, now you have this one idea. Okay? You have one idea, and taking this idea into many different directions, following somebody's checklist, following some kind of rule or discipline. Okay, so. That we don't talk about it today. We'll talk about the free association major, uh, the brainstorming thing. So a kind of free association major. So it means, okay, I'll explain what free association means. It means it is encouraged to build on the idea of others. So you associate the idea to, and then you create the other one. So. You should write or even draw clearly and be vocal every time you place your post-it note so that others have more chances to build on your ideas. So basically, brainstorming is not trying to throw a new idea every single time, but instead, you can just take a look at the, the, the idea that's there already and, hmm, okay, I can come up with some alternative or some like modified idea or associated idea. Okay, so that's how your brainstorming grows. It's not like you throwing every new ball every time. Okay, so you can associate with the already existing idea. Of course, you can throw a new ball in there, but it's associating and getting more post-it notes. So, so to enhance, you want to put your post-it notes so that others can associate. Others can read it, understand it, and say, oh, okay, I got the idea based on that. Okay, so that's what we're aiming. Okay? And when you're doing this free association brainstorming, go for quantity. Okay? Go for quantity, not the quality. Alright? We care about quality, of course, but later. Alright? We'll do that later. After we get the quantity, then we step back and say, oh, okay, which one's the good ones? Alright? So it is not sniper rifling the best solution, but more like you know shooting a shotgun. All right. So it's not we're not trying to aim for like a very specific target in the beginning. Just you know exploring, and we are just hoping you know some some bullet, one bullet is hitting the target. Okay. So think of like a shooting a shotgun. I've never shot a shotgun, but you know what I mean, right? Okay. In brainstorming mode, you have to put yourself in this mode. Welcome wild and crazy idea from others. Don't say, oh, I don't, that's too crazy. No. That crazy idea may help you, the others to come up with the, the feasible, good idea. So don't kill the crazy idea. It's just, a, I don't know, another step to get closer to your real solution. Just think of that, okay? And give every policy you know, short, positive feedback, all right? Maybe, we've done brainstorming before, okay? Who have hidden your post-it note after you've written because people might say hey, bad things about your idea? Yes, right? You have that memory, right? I don't want that to happen because this, you, you think this may be crazy, too crazy, too stupid to put it up on there, but maybe a guy or girl next to you can come up with good idea based on your stu stupid or, you know? <laughs> yes, it's not stupid, okay? So everything counts, everything counts. But to do so, you need to welcome them, all right? So if you see anybody putting a post-it note, say, oh, okay, that's good. Or, oh, okay, that's, that's hilarious, but that's, that's, you know, that's interesting, okay? Just give him or her a short, positive feedback so that they're more comfortable with stupid ideas or crazy ideas, okay? 
Because I told you to make a crazy idea, okay? It's not their fault, it's my fault. Alright? So welcome them and try to you know, get in that mode. Good. And here's me um, drawing you, okay? Three, five of you. Or this is you. Okay, so brainstorming as a free association methodology, it means it's connecting your brains. Okay? It's really it's trying to connect your brains. So if it's almost like connecting your brain. So if somebody says, hey, coffee to keep you away, then you know, oh, okay, green tea to keep you away. And then, hey, energy drink to stay away. That's okay. It's not new, and maybe it's a bad example. But I just wanted to tell you, you know, it doesn't have to be a super new idea every time. Okay? It can be just very similar idea, you know, kind of um, drifting a little bit, you know, towards different directions. And don't worry about you know them being you know similar. It's okay. You're, you're associated. Your brain is eating the information that's there and then getting the new ones. Okay. So that's how we do this. So don't shoot for a new idea every time. Okay. And then so you need to increase the chance of building up on the other ideas. Meaning you want to write clearly. Okay. So, and then try to make a headline. Maybe a word doesn't make much sense to the people. Maybe a small sentence, the headline sentence, can help people to understand it better and then uh, help them to associate better or further. And you can draw, you can draw too. But sometimes drawing can take you to a very different world. <laughs> okay, is this a bird or a cat? So, yeah, it depends on. It's okay. And of course, this is also important. Try to verbally share. Whenever you know, put up your post-it note, every time try to say it out loud. Because you know, when you're brainstorming, you're like busy writing, and you're really not looking at it, right? But you cannot close, shut your ears, right? So if you verbally say your idea when you're putting up on there, people will, you know, listen, or people will hear, and that helps your buddy writing next to you to associate again. So this is just trying to increase the chance to build up on the other's idea, all right? So this is a, this is a, uh, a, a key. And then go for a quantity and build on the other's um, idea. So if you want to go for quantity, um, it's, it's easier to get quantity if you just build up on the ideas that exist in already. And of course, encourage wild ideas, welcome wild ideas, that's fun. And this is very important. Defer judgment and do not block the others. Okay, do not block the others to associate and come up with crazy ideas. We, we, it's not me saying don't judge forever. We will judge later. But when we're doing brainstorming, let's not judge. Let's not block you know, somebody's brain going around exploring, all right? So let's try to you know, um, accelerate each other. And to go for quantity, you want to put it in yourself in a brainstorming mode. So it's like you know, him putting the, 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 the post-it note and you saying, oh, nice, that's cool, or just, you know, thumb up. And I had a thumbs up Coke co last mm -hmm. night, yeah? That's a Coke for you, right? That's the Indian Coke, thumbs up? Yeah, thunder in your throat? Taste of thunder. That's good, yeah? Somebody told me Pepsi, Go and thumbs the up. thumbs up. Yeah. That right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, brainstorming. To summarize, so this is an effective way to do your brainstorming. Go for a quantity. All right. And we will care about the quality, of course. But later, later after the session is over, we'll step back and say, okay, let's see the quality. But while you're doing, you don't care. All right. And then try to make it so that it's easy to understand, so that it will enhance. Um, the, the building up on the other's ideas, okay? And try to welcome all the ideas. Put yourself in the brainstorming mode, all right? Welcome crazy ideas. Of course, you want to put the, it's, it's okay to put up the crazy ideas and try to build up on it, okay? So, okay, that, these are the four things that, uh, that helps you. And, well, we, we're not gonna do this today, but strategic brainstorming tips, okay? Um, you want to clarify what you're brainstorming, okay? Don't just random brainstorm, okay? Because 
people lose focus, and you, you will get lost what you're talking about. So clearly, try to clearly state what you're brainstorming. It's, it's really nice to ask you the right question. So are you looking for the solution? Are you looking for the definition? Are you looking for some other recognition? You can brainstorm many different things. Okay? You can brainstorm a solution, or you can brainstorm many other things. All right, so, but you need to be asking the, the right suitable question for brainstorming. For example, you don't answer your math question with brainstorming, do you? No, right? So the math problems, they're well-defined problems, right? Brainstorming is more suitable for, so to say, ill-defined problems, meaning, um, you know, that, that questions that diversity might help to answer, right? Many people have many different answers. like. Yeah, so those are the questions that's, that's suitable. Questions that are interesting to expand the solution space, right? And are questions that logical or critical thinking would not provide an innovative solution. And this is, um, this is from Stanford. They say, okay, when you start brainstorming, it's, it's, it's nice to have how might we question. How might we do this in this way, or how might we get these people to there? Or you know, these are the you know one way to put your good brainstorming question, or you know, like I said, ill-defined question. So there might be many solutions, many, many, many solutions. All right. So okay, here's a here's a note for you. I mean, don't try to do everything with brainstorming. Okay? You need to identify what are the suitable for brainstorming, what are not suitable. Sometimes you need to answer some questions in a logical way and then find the right question out of these and then put it into the brainstorming. Or maybe vice versa. You go brainstorming, you find new question, and then you answer that with your logical approach. Okay? So I see many people like in com companies in Japan. Okay, they have done many things in, in their traditional way and now they learn brainstorming. They try to do everything with brainstorming. No, you don't eat everything with your chopsticks. That's what I said to them, okay? You use spoons to eat soup, right? You use knife and fork to have your steak. You use chopsticks for almost everything, but, you know, chopsticks are for chop, you know, some certain things. So, you use your tool for different meals, right? Exactly the same here. Don't brainstorm everything. Don't logical think everything, right? You need to identify, that's what I'm saying about talking about strategic brainstorm. You need to understand what you're asking, okay? And stay in innovative thinking mode. That's really important to you know, conduct brainstorming in an effective way. And you don't want the in-the-box solution as output, of course. And also, you do not want ordinary sci-fi, science fiction movie solution, okay? This is what's gonna happen. If when I ask you to ideate, everybody likes to go to sci-fi, right? The, technic, the, the technology from the future 200, I don't know, 2,500 years or something, okay? It's okay, it's okay to explore that, but, you know, sci-fi is sci-fi, all right? So, become a grow up and it's okay. I'm not saying try to limit to the, the current technology, I'm not saying that, but don't go too sci-fi, all right? Trans teletransportation does not exist. Okay, anti-gravity, we haven't found that yet. So those are the sci-fi that I'm talking about, all right? You can go to, you know, if you have some knowledge in your, uh, your domain, it's okay. Maybe somebody in your team thinks, oh, that's a sci-fi. If you can prove yourself, that's okay, all right? But I'm just saying, okay, because I, every time, I'm talking to you geeks, okay? I know if you, you, if you know your, your geek, you know that, right? <laughs> don't go too sci-fi, don't go too Star Wars or, yeah. Rajinikan. Yeah. Rajinikan, don't go to Rajinikan. The, the, the movie? Talibu. Oh, okay, yeah. Talibu. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, don't go too far, right? So, that's that. Okay, so, let's do the exercise. Of course, the exercise comes in two parts. First, you do it, and second, you look for some insight, okay? So, let's conduct the brainstorming on how might we perform lifelong. Okay? This is the question I kind of prepared for you. Alright? And then try to explore the solution space. Alright? And then, um, how can you change your brainstorming question to improve the <coughs> divergent thinking process? So, I, I will give you this, but you can modify it a little bit. Alright? If, if you think it's, it's more 
I don't know, easy to do or it's more interesting to do. For example, like, like how might we perform live logging so that the user can gain a reputation as a cool early adapter? I thought this was you know, like version two, all right? So you can go straight with how might we perform live logging question, okay? Or you can add like a, a word or two to this right? based on, and of course, these exercises are uh, relatively connected. So, you know, you can look back what you have discussed with the value graph and try to come up with some ideas. That's okay. So, I'll give you, um, I don't know, uh, let's say 10 minutes to think about the question. If you want to stick with this question, that's totally fine. If you want to like little update to modify this question, go ahead and do so. And after, uh, yeah, I'll just give you five minutes, okay? After five minutes, let's start the brainstorming. So, first I'll give you five minutes to think about. All right, think about brainstorming. And so here's a, here's a example before I can let you do it. So how might we perform live logging so that user can gain a reputation as a cool early adapter? So these are examples. For example, finger motion deduction with brain. That looks really cool if I'm doing Maybe not, maybe yes, do agree, disagree. Or I don't know, a, per, per, a pulse log with neck bend. If neck bend looks really cool, it's, it's very visible, right? It's more than a shoe. Probably that's for that. Or you know, things like this. Right? Like headset that really sticks out. I don't want to wear it. Looks probably looks dumb. But you know, maybe I don't know, people think it's really cool. So, um, like yeah, standing really standing up shoelace instead of a shoe, maybe? Something like this. So I'm just showing you, you know, asking the question, trying to state it right there, and then trying to answer it in many directions. All right? So, okay, let's put it in uh, two parts. So, part one, of exercise one. Let's try to um, state your question, okay? If you're sticking with this, that's fine. If you have something you found in the value graph, let's try to add it onto the, the question. All right, I'll just give you five minutes. And then after five minutes, I want you to write it down in, on the middle of the sheet so that you know what you're brainstorming. All right, go on. Yeah. Oh, just, just, just one, one question. Yeah, yeah, one question. So just one question, just one brainstorming question, just fine for, for now. Okay, just one brainstorming Thank you. 
we're not looking for quality now. We'll check the quality later. We're done. Okay? And try to wait. I'm not done yet. So try to make easy so that people can understand you. Okay? Or you're both in notes. And don't forget, don't forget, put yourself in brainstorming mode. Excited? Good, good, good. Okay, so go for a crazy idea, wild idea, and try to welcome the others to go for a crazy idea. Okay, don't stop them, don't stop them for to come up with new idea. And don't forget, it's a free association major. You don't have to have new ideas every single time. Alright? I'm putting um, less pressure on you when you put up the new, new post and stuff. Okay, I'll timer 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So 10 minutes, go brainstorm. Start. You can start. Okay, so nobody's judging you. So, don't 
but thinking about live logging and trying to perform live logging in many different ways and try to go out of the box. So you, want, you don't want to be in the box with Apple. You don't want to be in the box with Google, right? You want to find the out of the way of the box so that they'll say, oh, right? When you saw, when they saw you, right? So that's the attitude, right? So let's take um, like, uh, let's say 10 minutes to ex find your insight. And then, do you still have your insight color post-it note? Yeah? yeah. Are you, did you run out of them? If you ran out of them, we can probably provide them. No, you will okay. Out of that? Okay. We can rearrange. So, yeah. Decide which one is your inside color. Okay, I'll, I'll timer a 10 minutes, so go find your inside.
gaming technology, then we also want that to be closely integrated with the social platforms so that people around it get motivated that you, you know you are indulging into something that is actually keeping a track of your medical uh, conditions and also helping you sustain that. So, so it's, it's both of us are using my if both of us are using this service and if I am in level 1 of my health condition and you are in level 2 of your health conditions okay. and both of us post this on our Facebook profiles well everybody here in this room knows that oh I am in level 1 but oh hey you are in level 2 and so that's why we have to use it we can also have a health timeline at every 2 years so and at the end of one of at the end of in one year this is the fun part that we saw in the video that you need fun to engage people and in all this we are assuming that people are very expert on the technology part but what we will try is to keep this simple for the for usage and we will tie up with government for subsidies if they give us the, so it would create a widespread in all the countries so you don't have to wait for new years to come up and take a resolution that I, I'll join the gym from Jan first yeah. you have one more new week and you have a trainer, your own trainer that's just associated with the gym alright okay alright okay so yes I really like so they, did you see they kind of start exploring new ideas based on the findings, right? So this is how you continue, okay? Like I said, this is this one shot doesn't give you much. But doing this, you know, twice, three times, four times, and then narrow it down sometime and exploring it again, then that'll get you going, right? The, you know, interesting perspective, maybe that was on the, yeah, that was the insight that, you know, hey, there, why don't we focus on, you know, not somebody who has the internet already, but who's a new to the internet. So they get the internet and their service at the same time. That's something I never thought about. Because people now, when you hear like live blog or whatever, you would think that you go to Europe and who has internet, America who has internet. But why don't we get to these people who's new to the internet? And why don't they introduce this as an internet? Like, I know the problem that these people face, more than having internet, access to internet, the bigger problem is health knowledge. Exactly, they have no access to internet. And they're more susceptible to the free basics coming in. We can introduce our yeah. thing to people who are And you know, that's probably out of the box with the big players, right? Big players probably tend to think that they go on the internet world and do things, but they're not going to the off-grid world and try to do this. That's and this will also serve the purpose of digital India in the rural areas ah, and reach mass. Okay. okay. So and then they, they understand that some opportunities happening around them, so they may get some win from their back to win. Mm -hmm. So for the next time for a health community, you need to censor it, not Google it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And for Instagram followers, you get you need to upload your healthy pictures and yeah. your, your So they have already you know picked up some keywords. Okay non-internet area, you know, and then uh, maybe the, the community, and then maybe the gaming, I don't know, gaming or some kind of competition, a you know, relationship on this Basically platform. Basically customer engagement is yeah. what we're actually tracking. Yes, and, and don't forget, that didn't come as an idea, that came as a, you know, finding, right? Finding. And then you kind of built your idea, new ideas based on these findings. So, Insight can be a building block for your new idea or some better ideas. Okay, so thank you. You can say thank you. So don't think that your post-it notes are already a solution. Okay, no, they're just the pieces and bits for you to be, you know, come up with better ideas. So don't try to brainstorm your solution right away. You'll never get anywhere. Okay? You'll never get anywhere. So try to find insight among these different explorations. Okay, So that's how you brainstorm. And of course, if the phase change, if, if the, the project phase goes on, if you're like a, in the phase of implementation, then of course you have to ask yourself different questions. right? Of course, then your solution might appear on your post-it note. So like I said, these are the tools. Okay, it doesn't mean how you do things, right? You need to use this tool proper way and proper timing to get the best out of this. All right. So that's something I we all, we always focus. Uh, we always emphasize: don't let the tool drive you. You need to drive yourself with the tools. Okay. Good. Let's take a 10-minute break. And if you want to take a look around, on the, what's that? Oh, no, sorry. I was, yeah, I was waiting for you guys. Sorry, sorry. Let's go to the second group. Why don't you come up with you? Thanks for reminding me. Uh, I think first we'll introduce ourselves. That's uh, Neville. 
Okay. Okay. So we came up with the idea of food bank. Now people can go to this bank and uh, you know deposit the food, and this food will be given to the people who are in need. Yes. Now the out of box idea in this uh, this uh, uh, system was that uh, we will provide telephonic service in the sense the food will be given to the particular person, poor people, and we will give them the service of telephone, and they will have a communication with the person who donated. So you know through this we are trying to connect the social connect also. And, and the social sensitivity among us. Now, oh, by the way, they're, they're questioning us how might we perform life yeah, yeah. Okay, the, so, so the what can the yeah, alternatives of food bank? So what we thought about in most of the uh, Asian uh, Asian countries there is that they don't know the concept of food medicines or nano foods. Mm -hmm. So so due to rapid growth of globalization and urbanization, we do not we do not always have time to have complete three times milk. So people can adopt to nano foods or or they can adopt to donations. Uh, I mean, uh, they can adopt to uh, food medicines. Now the insight is that we are also increasing knowledge economy in the sense and we also thought about having an organization which provides milk to the infants. Now there are many sub-Saharan African countries or developing nations where the uh, death mortality is, is very high. And when we see infant mortality, the, the, the figures are really, really bad. So through this organization, what we can do is can reduce the infant mortality rates. Uh, moreover, uh, so talking about uh, taking this journey through a key, key insight and then coming back to the idea, mm. uh, we are focusing upon resource management mm. that can facilitate good healthcare services all around the globe, mm. uh, no matter which country it is. Mm. So, uh, so as talking about a food bank, it's one of the most innovative concepts which are coming right now, where you can actually you know invest into uh, invest your leftover food into some other social sensitive activities. Apart from that, we are also focusing upon finding out a way of providing organic fertilizers to all the farmers in India. Because you know, they, they actually use pesticides and fertilizers which are not really good for uh, their soil and for our health. Moreover, uh, we came up with some very creative ideas of uh, having a drug management application where you know actually in US people, uh, so you have uh, the marijuana is legal in uh, US and even we, we consume alcohol and uh, other, other drugs. So you know how about having a drug management app where you can actually record your uh, drug intake in different forms and even in medicine uh, to some extent and you can actually understand how exactly your, uh, your body is consuming drugs. So you, you can get a better idea of how, what exactly your healthcare is. Moreover, we, we have uh, also planned to introduce a comprehensive sex education application uh, which can be provided through parents to their children not to uh, school because it is going to take a long time in India to you know, accept this comprehensive sex education attitude. So you know how about introducing an application that can be facilitated through parents uh, to students or uh, to their children and they can actually learn this concept of sex education. No, not only sex education but comprehensive sex education. So sex education only deals with the biological part but comprehensive sex education deals with other parts like menstruation, pregnancy etc. Uh, moving further, we, we identified the key insights that we need to focus upon. We have identified that we are going to be a platform. So we are going to be a service based company if we are, I ideate further, we are going to be a platform or a medium. Moreover, we are going to focus upon awareness that is going to lead to knowledge uh, economy. So we are going to focus upon something that can bring out awareness to people. Apart from that, we are also focus upon human efficiency. So if you are having a drug management application or CSE uh, application, you can actually focus upon more and more human efficiency activities, human efficient activities. Okay. So if we look at the key insights of this uh, point, like uh, if you talk about nano foods, then we must also look about the toxicity of the food, how toxic it is for human being. So if we don't look at that perspective, then it's uh, no more of these. So, so like several aspects like, you know, how visible it is to have such type of ideas. Is it really visible for humankind or not? So that's what our key insight for us. And uh, since we are linked to the food bank, we are also talking about how we can reduce food wastage and we are talking about things like uh, healthy lifestyles, uh, nutrition value, because a lot of us end up eating a lot of things which we don't actually need. Mm -hmm. And how do you just have a more balanced diet, which is very basic, but again, not something which we are doing very efficiently right now. So we are also looking at that and we are also looking at how all these things could go on to improve human efficiency and better resource management as they mentioned before. And we are also looking at like you can uh, have your backyard kitchen, you can have, you can start producing food in small quantities. So whatever waste is there, you make it into a compost. 
then also you like you can uh, try looking at what different ways you can make food out of grass or some uh, fruits or some uh, flowers. So you start working on those lines again. We also have another concept that if you're going to a hotel and you're eating some food, you can also pay a certain amount for one dish and say that this food will go to somebody, whoever needs it, and the person can walk in with dignity and have that food instead of you know asking for it. So these are the kind of concepts that we have come up with. And like then you also like uh, maybe for the face collection you have these food taxis going and collecting on their certain routes which are formed where the people will uh, either deliver or you go and give those food to the people who need. So we, 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 we might also have a food application, you know, where you can just uh, log in and just say we, we have left over, please go and collect it from us and then we, you know, so food has been food bank. Complement of food, food bank. Yeah. Yeah. And the amazing concept is nobody goes hungry. <laughs> and this can be implemented globally. Okay. One of our insights was that a lot of things we were talking about, we felt that as an application could be greatly enhanced with the use of uh, apps and the, that's the use of technology we find in this whole process. Okay. And so if you can come to us, we'll come to you. Okay. Let me stop you there. So this team was interesting. They had this idea of food bank when they were doing the, um, the value grab. Okay? And then they were like, okay, we already have the idea. What do we brainstorm? I told them, okay, why don't you brainstorm? Okay, let's consider food bank as one of the, the first post-it note that goes on there. And then they were like, oh, we don't have any more. But see, you found so much more. And you found, you know, there's so much, so many things that associated to food bag that, okay, there's a food taxi, right? There's a food, I don't know, you, you said the food can be an investment. I, I like, I think that's, a, that's an insight, right? Because a food is a resource, okay? But you don't preserve your food and eat later. That's not an investment. You just give it to somewhere and then you, you ask for a return, right? And then maybe that's a concept is interesting. It's very interesting. And so, and and, and you you want you went on to be aware. It, it needs to you know wake the awareness. Otherwise, it's not going to work, right? So this team was like, okay, we already have the idea. We don't have any more to brainstorm. But you have so much to brainstorm. Okay, that's the point. And then now you know your food bank is not the best idea. Right? You have found so many other clues, right? So even though you may think, oh, I really have the best idea ever. No, you haven't, ex you, haven't thought, you haven't looked around, you haven't poked around the bushes. You will see more gold hiding, okay? And still, your food bank idea is now enhanced, right? Now it's connected to the taxi, investment, and app, so now it's enhanced, all right? So it's, it's a good divergent thinking. You're picking up different hints. While you're working also, we were discussing. We only have one idea, now we have kind of 10 to 11 ideas. Yeah, yeah, to explore, right? Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, it was brainstorming the super basics of basics. But if you get this right, you can utilize it further and better. I mean, you know, you can you know, do this in many cases, in different situations. So if you're doing brainstorming with your your buddy or your, your group, um, let them know some key things, okay? These are the keys. And if you want to um, dig further on brainstorming, type in brainstorming, go to the USAF or D school material. They have a, a very good write-up about how you do brainstorming. Of course, you can read the, uh, the scientific paper about brainstorming. No, it's boring. Yes, yes, so many people have done serious research on this, but you don't probably get the point. But Stanford, they try to you know, uh, comprehend them, those researches, into a very simple, nice write-up. Okay, then you can read them, and then they probably, they basically describe the same thing, but with some more visuals. But understand, it's a free association, you need to welcome the wild ideas, and you need to convince all, everybody in the table, we're not looking for solutions, we're just looking for insights. Okay, good. All right, let's take a 10 minute break. I'm not missing anything, right? Good, okay. Okay, let's take a 10 minute break, I'll just set the timer. Okay, I'll come back, we'll come back in 10 minutes. Right. Or the bad news is we're right on time. No, we're like way off the time, but it's okay. It's okay. It happened last year, and sorry, we will go a little over 5:30, maybe. I'll try to make it by 5:30, but probably not happening. But if you're like so busy to go somewhere, if you have planned something. Please go. Just tell your name to the TAs and we'll know that you have participated and you have done everything. So, okay? Alright. So, the last piece for today. 
the CDCA. It's customer management analysis. It's a combination of you doing architecting, thinking about the realization, how you implement or how you, you know, uh, make your idea happen, and then uh, business synthesis that I want to think about. So, uh, okay. So let me talk about CDCA. Okay, it's a customer value chain analysis, and then it's a value chain viewpoint. Stakeholders and their values are identified in a diagram. Again, this was um, this was actually oh, okay. Maybe I have it somewhere else, but it was uh, uh, invented or it was a. Uh, created by a professor at um, Stanford, and then we have been using this and we have been applying this to many different worlds. So, um, CDCA can clarify who are the important stakeholders for your idea or concept, and how does the value flow around these stakeholders, or within these stakeholders, or how does material or energy or whatever flows, how does information around your idea or within your idea flow, and who sh you should design your solution for, or who is your important customer and who you should focus for. So this is an example, classical example from, um, from, this, uh, from this textbook. Um, so this is the uh, Hewitt Packard, um, their electrocardiographic monocar. Okay, this is a quick example to give you some idea about CDCA. This is the, the whole picture, okay? I'll go step by step. So first, identify important stakeholders. Giving this, this was your idea, okay? Electrocardiographic monitor. And you try to list up or you know have some users maybe, payers, people around user, business partners and authorities and etc. You you list up your stakeholders, okay? So in my case, here's a cure packer, here's a doctor, here's a patient, okay? You know, Maybe this patient is not a, as a good patient because he's got <laughs> broken bones. He should not go to see a doctor with heart expertise, right? But okay. Well, so now I identify the value flow between these stakeholders. So dollar sign or whatever sign you like uh, for, for money, capital, and icon for product service and information so that it, it's more visual. Uh, and then uh, explanation mark for claims and regulation that might happen in this um, value card. Okay, so I've drawn, okay, Hewitt Packer want to provide this new device with their um, laptop and their printers. This is like old example, so this is talking about 1980s. They used to create and sell a lot of laptops. Okay, they don't, what they do? I don't know. Yeah, they don't, not, not, not as much as they did before. And then this device goes to the patient, and the patient does, you know, gets um, doctor feedback, and then the doctor pays the money and then the feedback to the Hewitt Packard. So this is like the diagram. And you perform analysis. Who is the important customer? You trace dollar sign and exclamation mark. And then the value balancing, input and output, and any negative effect that might have on the, on the whole value, uh, value chain. So here, so he says, this doctor says, hey, my money just goes out. It never comes back. Why do I want this? Monitor, right? It helps him to diagnose the, the, the patient better, but his money just goes out. He's not gaining much. So in and out balance is not good. So you as a you know being a creative team and say, hmm, maybe we should get insurance company involved. Okay? So the patient they pay money to the insurance company and they can pay the doctors, then okay, this value flows, right? And then to do this, we need government permission, right? Government needs to support this device so that it's a, it's a medical device and they can, you know, cover with the insurance, right? So this is how the discussion evolved, all right? So I know some of you are in uh, the business uh, background, business major. When you say value chain, you only focus on the, the supply chain, right? There are some books like this, but we're kind of extending from the supply chain to the, the, the values, the, those are sometimes intangible values, okay? Here's another example, vending machine in Japan, okay? Customer, there's a location owner, I'll, I'll show you the magic here. So the consumer, he gets the bottle, right? He pays, right? He pays, but this place that has a vending machine, they are not collecting money. There is a vending machine operating company collecting the money, okay? And these companies, 
is, is actually uh, providing the, 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 the vending machine and in the bottle, and they refill it sometimes, and they're paying the location owner the rent. So, if you have a land in Japan, put the vending machine. You're not losing anything, okay? They even pay your electricity for the vending machine. They pay the rent, so you gain, okay? So if you have a piece of land, put the vending machine there, okay? So, and then they just complain. They just want, you know, they just leave that. And of course, there is a supply chain behind this, of course. So there's a vending machine manufacturing, a packaging company, there's a bottling company. They uh, create the bottles. I mean, they, yes. And then, of course, they have the business um, in between. And of course, packaging company, uh, of course, deals with the vending machine manufacturing, the size, and then the, uh, maybe the coloring. And of course, behind all this, there's a beverage company, for example, Coca-Cola, providing the raw material. And then, of course, they're giving a specification on their, uh, on their uh, drinks and maybe the temperature that the vending machine should keep in. Okay? So this is just an example in Japan. It, it tells you a lot, right? Because if you think of you know, getting this from the vending machine and that's it, no, there's so much more going on. Right? So much more going on. So this is just kind of analyzing what's going on. Or you can start drawing your own, you know, CBCA to build or design your business too. So, okay, here's your exercise. Discuss and create CBCA of one of your concept or idea. So first, I'll, I'll take, uh, let's say, five minutes. Try to choose the most out of the box idea. You may think, oh, that's impossible. But I want you to try to design a CBCA around your out of the box idea, okay? So for this exercise, just try to choose one idea or concept that you may like from the brainstorming, okay? It's okay if it's still vague. You will kind of clarify as you do CDC, okay? And then consider the values that are not only money and goods and service. So for example, this is souvenir from Ahmedabad. For my family, I have two kids, she's three, and my son is one, okay? The daughter, age of three, she just loved to learn anything, okay? I told her where India is, where I told her where Ahmedabad is, and she's telling me, are you in India? I was Skyping with her. Are you in India? Are you, are you in that area? Are you, she was mentioning, are you in that picture? Or maybe she thinks that I'm in the world map. <laughs> I don't know what, what's going on in her mind, but okay. Here is a souvenir from Ahmedabad for my family, CBCA, okay? So this is me. All right, the airport, I'm just trying to make it simple. I got this post postcard, okay? I paid the air, I didn't pay the airport, but I paid the stand and the guy, okay? This is my CBC. Well, yes and no. This is just a supply chain, right? Here's the intangible value that comes in. That's my wife, that's my dog, okay? And then I show my post postcard to my wife and said, oh, you went to Ahmedabad, how was it? So is this is the heritage, wow, you did, you go there and blah, blah, blah. This is the conversation that happens, okay? But yeah, that's, that's okay. This is valuable, but this is more valuable to me. Conversation with my daughter, daddy, where is Ahmedabad? How was it? Tell me more about this. This is a value, okay? So, as a father, as a father, of course, getting this as my, one of my capital or whatever resource is a value, but help making this happen is more valuable. So if you're provide, if you're like a manufacturer for the post postcard who's targeting a person like me, you will make this you know um, fascinating so that this conversation will you know will be happy and fun, right? So values are not all, always tangible. Right? This is tangible money and a car. This is intangible. Yeah. But this is something you want to focus on. Right? Of course this is important. You want to have the right quality, right price. I'm not saying this is less important, but this is as same as important as you provide the right stuff. Okay? So try to imagine what might be the output and the outcome of your idea or service. And I know your service or idea is very vague yet, right? But try to imagine and try to design it, or 
okay? And this is a version one, or even version 0 0.1. You, you do this many times, and you change arrows, you, you, know, you bring new stakeholders, that's how you do it. But for exercise, let's, let's do, um, just try to choose uh, one idea, one idea that you like, or out of the box, you think, and then let's do this. And then who are main stakeholders? Don't try to list up everyone. Okay, let's just focus on the main stakeholders and what are the values for the stakeholders and how is the value change, okay? So this is visualizing value change so you can discuss, modify, and make it in, as a part of an innovative solution. Okay, so that's what we're doing, doing here, okay? All right, so I'll give you, uh, let's say, I'll give you five minutes, okay? I know, I, I know I'm pushing you, but I'll give you five minutes. Just choose one out-of-the-box idea. All right, you can vote or you can do whatever. Just choose one idea within five minutes. Okay, go.
nós também não tivemos problema. Nós também não tivemos
you, you need a provider for your service or product. And I mean, maybe just pretend that's your company, all right, or your alliance. Okay. So put that in the picture. Then probably the value chain will be clarified. All right. So that's just one quick comment. All right. Go on.
Everybody's paying me money. No, no, right? Now you understand, okay, he or she may not be paying us. This guy won't pay us. This guy is not gaining much, right? So once you understand the big picture, now you understand that, hey, this is not going to happen. Or now you probably, did you find any com competition? Because you will be pulling this, you know, value arrows, right? Between you and your competition, right? So your value chain, uh, CBCA, is going to look very interesting if you bring your competition into the picture. Yeah? So identify your competition, and your competition is always direct and indirect. For example, you think Coke is, you know, going after um, Pepsi and they're fighting. But what if, what if, okay, people who drink Coke like to go take a shower. They need to compete against, you know, refreshment, <laughs> taking a shower and drinking a Coke. You're, there's indirect competition as well, right? So you're not just competing against of your kind, right? Yeah. For example, buying a car is one option. I don't know, buying something completely different, spending money on something very different is an option too. So, yeah, like Toyota is not competing only against Honda and Nissan and Tata, right? They're competing against so many other things. So, direct and indirect competition can be realized, I mean, understood <laughs> with using your CBCA as well, okay? So, we haven't here heard from these two teams, so, you know, you kind of saw it's coming, right? So, let's hear from, you know, let's start from this team, okay? So, you don't have to explain every single arrow, but, Tell us um, the, what is your idea that you were drawing, and then just introduce us some interesting arrows, okay? And then some interesting findings or insights. Yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can kind of, yeah, okay, you can see it, everyone can see you if we flip our hands. Okay.
So uh, we'll be like a mediator, mediator between the gym and the customers. So that is one. Uh, other than uh, medical stores, which we already have in our supply chain. So uh, they get money from uh, us also, like we will have to give them commission and the customer will also pay them. So uh, that is one thing. Uh, and doctors. Uh, we had an interesting point of online sir that uh, we, people do root ca canals. So uh, while doing root canal, they can get our product fixed in their tooth. So <laughs> they don't have to go through the hustle of uh, root canal. Okay. Uh, while we consider competitors, we have uh, other lifelock devices that are already existing in the market. So they are one of the biggest competition, competition that we have. Uh, other than that, uh, there are apps, say for example, iPhone has a sleep tracking device. So those kind of apps that are available for free. So uh, it will be kind of difficult for people to pay for such kind of uh, gadgets. Uh, yeah. We are also looking at some of the benefits that, will, uh, that the customers will have, say, um, these days increasing work pressure uh, for fresh there. So they, are, they might not be able to uh, you know, take care of their diet and everything. Work. Say for example, water intake. So many time it, times it happens that we are not able to uh, you know, take proper amount of water or food or whatever it may be. So it can give notification to the customers that uh, about it. Uh, also, uh, prevention of diseases is what we are looking at because uh, through saliva, it can also track the body temperature uh, and everything. So that is another aspect. Uh, and also, uh, there won't be any need for multiple devices. In one device, it can have uh, all kinds of things covered. So uh, because very few uh, lifelong devices monitor your intake of food and nutrition. So that is one point. So uh, we have uh, we also came with uh, around uh, very uh, important insights like mm -hmm. it is a breakthrough in microscopic engineering right uh, and uh, oral healthcare is something that uh, is not very uh, common nowadays but uh, this product can actually may actually use for the oral uh, the tooth and all so it is very uh, actually it is very easy because uh, I watch and all we have to carry along with it but we can just wear it inside our mouth and. One. We don't have to, we just can't, we also can't feel it that we are carrying anything. And for people who don't really want to show off their like block devices, it is kind of personal like, and no okay. one will ever come to know that you are using some kind of I see, so it's the other way around. You don't want to show yeah, that you're a little bit concerned. I see, I see. Okay, yeah, based on your CVCA, you're, you're far back here, right? Yes. So you're saying that you're B2B or B2B to B2C, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, right. So you are you you need to communicate to your suppliers, of course, and you need to communicate with these alliance, yes. right? You need to convince them first before you get to the users, yes. right? So this will tell you, you know, who to focus on. Of course, you're building everything for users, but these are your customers, and customer is customer is a user. Okay, so that's how you you know try to find your scope, your focus, right? And of course, and you probably want the information directly from the users. Right? Yeah, so so you already have a customer service. Exactly. So I want to see some line in between manufacturer you and these yeah, folks. So, so, yeah. yeah. You probably kind of you ran out of the space, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's how you design your you know. Arrows. So, hey, we need to connect with these guys. So, oh, maybe we should have a customer service team on our side so that at least, you know, these lines will come in, right? Okay. Yeah. And also, and the doctors and the health advisors the users. So there will be automatically our trust will be like you know will find the consumer. Only because you know they are like a very different so that, so that story really tells me the analogy. So this is very similar to some product that you know already. What do you think? Do you see any uh, analogous um, value chain? It's a medicine, pills, right? So you provide, you create pills, you right manufacture pills, but you don't sell it. Right? You don't sell it to the patient. The doctors 
prescribe it yes. to the patient, right? So, do you have you ever heard of a first in line medicine? So, these pharmaceutical companies are after the first in line medicine, which <coughs> the doctors choose your medicine instead of their medicine. So, doesn't matter if it's effective or if it's I don't know. Of course, it should be effective, but you have to be first in line. So that doctors will choose yours, not theirs. Okay? So that's why bad things happening in Japan. Pharmaceutical company giving money to the doctors so that their product goes up in line and they will become the first choice. So that's something that pharmaceutical companies was focusing in after. So you know, by identifying you know this value chain, you can learn from different industries. Hey, this looks like a pharmaceutical industry. We sh we can dig up some information from them and learn from that. Okay, so CDCA really gives you a good image and you know abstract idea, and then give help you to explore more. Okay, good. Thank you very much. All right, let's hear from you guys. So again, briefly, um, briefly explain your idea, Please and then, yes, okay, so briefly explain your idea, and please point out maybe one or two important value arrows, and then tell us about um, the insight that you found. We have a made a product which is called invisible band, which everyone will be carrying with them in the elastic of their inner wear. So the attributes will be told to you by Avinash. Uh, okay, so this invisible band is actually the it's connected to an application inside your phone, which will keep you updated about various things. It's got a lot of features. Like you can keep you updated about your regular health checkups. It'll be keeping you updated about your blood pressure levels. Like generally, when people do not realize that the blood pressure level has gone like really low, this application through this band, if the sensor is going to let you know that the blood pressure level is really low, and what are like what are the precautions probably that you need to take for that. Uh, one very interesting thing that we have included in this band is where, while you buy the band, you register for uh, the certification of organ donation, which is a very uh, major issue right now in India, as we see. Uh, so as your like the band is going to. The application is going to let you know whether there is a demand for any particular organ wherever and the, when you register for this automatically you get registered for donating your organs after you are not alive anymore. So there is nobody else who is going to decide about uh, what is going to happen with your body after you die. You register for organ donation which should be used for purposes such as other people for other people or probably research purposes. And uh, yeah, and in case of any emergency this bank is going to uh, uh, realize that there is a certain emergency that we need a hospital nearby and uh, or probably some uh, medical facilities so that's how it's going to help the human. And the apps will uh, continuously put alarms and give you a vibrate tone so it will also help in energy consumption if you are low, low on energy the app will vibrate or give you an alarm that you need to consume something otherwise you will pain or anything and uh, now I would like to explain the supply chain process this is the raw material industry which supplies uh, elastic to the production department and the market uh, and the three stakeholders. The main stakeholder is individuals and uh, MNCs uh, will tie up, will, uh, will collaborate with the uh, underwear uh, companies, MNCs, uh, which will uh, provide us funding and will also collaborate with the hospitals. So the main value chain to MNCs uh, will be like uh, their product will get uh, marketed, marketed and uh, with hospitals that will be recognition in our apps will place uh, the hospitals which are nearby and for regular checkups where we need to go exactly. So uh, the hospitals will provide us funding and we would uh, uh, list their names uh, wherever the customer is situated. So if uh, there is an emergency, uh, their hospital name will be vibrated on their phone or the apps. Uh, and the individuals, the main value for the individuals that will be that they will get, get immediately emergency relief. And for any help, they can uh, their app will uh, support them. Or if they if they need anything, or uh, if, uh, if there's a blood donation camp nearby, their app will vibrate or give them a signal, yeah, notification that there's an uh, uh, organ donation camp or a blood donation camp. So uh, uh, so they can easily visit that. Apart from that, uh, uh, it will also create. Uh, we are also uh, uh, trying uh, to create awareness 
like how to use it and how how it gets connected uh, to people and uh, also uh, uh, focusing on the training sessions i mean how to get connected with people how to use the app so the rural people you know they don't know exactly how to use it so that mm -hmm. we are trying to create training sessions for people okay. so actually so here is what our approach was in order that each and everyone gets something out of it and no one at the end is idling uh it's like individual for the community and uh, we are thinking of creating you know, funding from future companies and agencies and to get some also written like something for something to them and uh, we are so also focusing on wide scale not only for country but even like how can it be applied on a world level so it's like a government company to be able to go in line which we using everyday life and how it can be used for that so that it makes it available accessible to all okay. uh, another reason why mnc mnc should use our product is because there is this we created a customer value chain and in the first one uh, there is this employee who is working for an mnc and he goes uh, he checks uh, in his uh, device that he is running very low on energy so uh, the device notifies uh, that uh, he is whether high on energy or low on e energy due to this he can also perform better if he is low on energy he can eat automatically and he uh, intake energy due to this he, in the value chain the employee goes to the boss and the boss sees the work that is done by the employee and uh, all the uh, employees have a employees and the boss have a place for the star employee because he knows that uh, when he when he is taking the energy what is the energy needed and accordingly he can work uh, and thus he comes to the star employee and talking about the value chain we have prepared two or three value chains first of all uh, if the breadwinner of the uh, family is having some problems so he can immediately be uh, medicated for some issues and so that the value is being provided to the family who are dependent on them suppose the bread and other things the dad and the family is dependent only on him and if he uh, dies then they will not be happy also. so they get the value from that happening uh, yeah that we are also targeting the, ch uh, the children uh, targeting the children safety we are trying to uh, introduce band in schools and colleges level so that if the child is safe he, he knows that he or she knows that from the beginning you know such uh, such devices there so even if the parents or family is not aware about that that the child can instruct his family and family in, in large can affect the society and the nation at large I see. I see. and there is no an limit and the same is for the organ donation like this is a life lock device right so the device knows definitely obviously according to your health that uh, this life lock device is going to uh, notify notify you when there is a need of an organ if you certify for the organ donation thing so if a man who is in need and an emergency for the organ you can probably if you are alive and the organ is not the major organ of your body you are willing to donate it you could donate it to the man so it, uh, it provides like a value to the man who It provides a life-saving value to the man who is. Uh, it's a win-win situation for both the parties because if the person who is donating, he also gets the recognition because good recognition will also add motivation to other people to come and donate more. Okay. And for government, they get the value of safety because there is no uh, like if the person is donating an organ or the entire body after he dies. There's uh, no nothing that's going to go wrong with it. It's going to be used for either medical purposes or research purposes. Okay. That's the assurance that it's going. Okay. Good. Good. So you have expanded your idea into different yeah, aspects, yeah. into the families, into the society and community. And so, okay. So everything happy? Did you find any wrong or any flaws in any weak yeah. spots? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Tell us about it. Where, where is your weak spot? I think I personally thought that why would the uh, government companies give us the funding? Like, why do they support you? Why would they support us? They are selling it without the bank. They will sell it with the bank. So how are they? Or they have to pay that much money? What you are selling is something that could be valuable to people. Right, right. And that is what we want. And another thing is that why would insurance company pay us? Right. Because they are actually providing better healthcare facilities. Yes. Insurance companies would. Couldn't be related to our. I think they would use that for people. <coughs> After putting all this down, that was the thing that we thought wouldn't go right according to how funding part. Good, good. And, uh, Because you, you're just drawing, right? And then you wish everything would go smoothly, but no, right? So it's 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 really important that you you stop and then you see what you have done and then say a little bit in the critical thinking mode and say, hmm, is this gonna really happen? Uh, is this guy really happy 
paying this money to us or to this guy or like for example like hospital right now you're asking hospital to do a new thing with this new product and then they're they're already super busy right they're running out of, of every man they have every woman they have now you're asking them to do more job you go nah right so now you know you really need to put your foot into their shoes and say are, are, is this real value for them okay it's your just arrows on your paper but if you really put your foot on their shoes you really need to think does this arrow really mean something to them if it doesn't nobody's paying you anything nobody's appreciating you okay so this CBCA seems to be a very simple drawing but it's very good um, discussion start to you to put yourself into their shoes and understand their values try to understand their values try to see if whether they're willing to pay for this or will it, are, are they appreciating any new values yes and then it's very good that you can see the whole picture right it's, it's not just one little value uh, exchanging between two stakeholders but instead it's the value chain <coughs> net of chain, the value that actually creating a larger value very good thank you very much okay so yes we're right on time Sorry about going over time, but you know, it's, we need some. So, okay, so this was the end of your exercises. This was the end of your session. All right, so we've been through, we've been, we've been through this whole thing, okay? And again, we just went one of this, one of this, and one of that. And that's never uh, realistic, never realistic. So. Here's what we really do. So, you know, we don't have a time for this. I'll just put it out there. So, now try to see all the output you created. Put it, lay out on the table. The first one, the second one, the third one. Try to put it in front of you. We're not doing anything. I just want you to try to see them all at once. I just want you to see them at all at once. Just put it on there. Yeah, you can put it on the floor, you can put it on the empty table, that's fine. I mean, we're not doing anything, okay? We're not, just, we're not doing anything. Keep this on, there's not buttons. There's still buttons up there. So, okay. So, by looking at this, by looking at this, you can recall your discussion, right? We've been doing this for hours, but because we've been visualizing each step, we've been visualizing different discussions from different perspectives, now you see the whole picture, right? We have changing our topics or changing our agendas, but still on the same scope. Right? Still the same scope. We're changing angles, right? And then you all, look at all your inside post-it notes, right? Those are the output from your first iteration. First iteration. Don't forget, I'm not expecting you to have a best solution ever yet. But picking up on these, you know, insight, you can go around the second time, right? Or you can go research, do a little research on the findings. All right. Go ask the professor. Go ask your friend in medicine, or go ask a friend who goes to gym all the time. Right? Or you can do a little analysis, like you know, for example, I gave you an example of okay, this one looks like a pharmaceutical business. So if you don't know anything about it, let's go ask somebody. Let's go check how they work, how they get the first line, you know, medicine. You know. Or Maybe now some teams have, have um, maybe thinking, hey, I want to fix the value graph that we created in the beginning. I'm kind of like hating my first version. Yes, that happens. Or maybe you start to hate whatever you were be focusing on. You're kind of liking different things, right? That happens, okay? And don't forget, it's everything is in your control, all right? Oh, you can sit down, you can sit down. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. But I just wanted to give you some idea that your discussion is never linear. 
okay? Your discussion is never linear, and it's really nice, it's really important you keep the discussion visual so that you can go back, okay? You can iterate, all right? So iteration never happens by itself, okay? You need to prepare for iteration, all right? And the reason you iterate is because you don't know. Okay, I don't know the right answer for this exercise. You don't know. Who knows the right answer? Nobody. All right, so you're figuring it out. You're figuring out the way. So you need to be ready to iterate. All right, so that's how you iterate. You, you leave your discussion in a visual way so that you can iterate and then identify insight because Without the inside post-it note, you cannot read through all the output, right? It's going to take you forever. But just pick up the insights, okay? That's more effective to, to iterate. So this is uh, what we do, okay? So in the intensive workshop, you learn some each steps and more tools. And then in the project-based learning, we ask them to iterate at least four times, okay? At least four times, so it's like going back and forth. And until the last moment, your problem definition is not fixed, your ideation process is still going, your architecting is still going, and business synthesis is still moving until the very last day. Ask Aishani. Yes. <laughs> but at the very, you know, when, when it's getting close to the end, you have a lot of insight from each step, and you're, you, you, you're, you're feeling that you're almost there, right? And when you see it, everything just you know, fits all together in a, in a, in a good way. So, it, but it, it, it needs several iterations. So that, that is a sense that I wanted to give you and then the power of visualizing your discussions, okay? And then some tools really help you to work in diversity. Good. And again, okay, so this is, you know, structurizing and seeing a whole picture that is part of the system thinking. And, you know, whenever we talked about value, the real value for people, you know, put yourself into their shoes, that was a part of the design thing. And then, you know, thinking about the business, but, you know, synthetical, maybe, in a way. The CVCA gives you a very synthetical, um, you, know, sen you know, sense to, to the business, all right? Business is not about spreadsheet, okay? We, we will get to the spreadsheet, okay? We'll get to the spreadsheet. We will get to the, all the fancy parts of the, the business model generation. But we need to understand our value proposition, okay? Otherwise, nothing will follow. Nothing will follow. So this is trying to identify, clarify what's the value proposition, all right? So what should be in the middle of the value, uh, the, the, the business model of generation, okay? And then, of course, we always care. Okay, are we creating new values? Are they, uh, do people care to pay for this new value you're trying to create, right? And who might be your direct competition? and in-depth competition, okay? And visualization really helps you to do those discussions as well, right? So I think I, you kind of felt what we were trying to do, okay? And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope, you know, these little tiny techniques will help you in, in many different ways. I know you're from different backgrounds. You're already working on the project. Already I've talked with you guys and already I'm onto something. I hope this will, will help you. And uh, don't forget to download the, the, the material in the really notes. So, okay, this is my last slide. Before I let you go, before I let you go, I want to show you one last video. Okay? No, it's not Innovation Man, sorry. I know you all love, you all love that Innovation Man, but this is an example from um, American Express. Okay? American Express, and um, they talk about their um, innovative um, campaign. So the, the reason I'm showing you this you know, at the end of the day, not in the beginning, is that you know, I always imagine when I first saw this video, I, I never thought, okay, maybe the guy, some guy just came up with this idea one day. But after I start teaching this course like this, Maybe not. Maybe a whole team was behind this, something like this. They were thinking, doing, checking, prototyping, testing, and they planned this to happen. So this is very innovative and innovation example that I really like. 
it's not a, a small enterprise, a small entrepreneurship type, but it's, it was a new product, completely new product for a big enterprise. So I think a lot of innovative thinking and a lot of entrepreneurship was behind the scenes. So just wanted to show you the example. In 2010, American Express created Small Business Saturday, a new shopping day right after Black Friday to help small businesses get what they needed most, more customers. But for 2011, the goal was clear. Make Small Business Saturday more than just a one-off event and cement its place as an official shopping day during the holiday season. American Express couldn't do that single-handedly, so they rallied business owners, consumers, and public officials to help. First, they gave small business owners a toolkit to carry the day. American Express armed them with everything they need from a shop small badge, to posters, to social marketing tools. This digital kit featured a YouTube video maker for businesses to make their own ads, a Facebook page builder, and a way to launch online deals through Foursquare. Over 500,000 owners took advantage. Next, American Express reached out to get public officials on board. Communities and states from coast to coast declared their support. Even the Senate stepped up and passed a resolution declaring Small Business Saturday an official day, unanimously. Finally, American Express rallied millions of shoppers to join the movement by finding local businesses and pledging to make one small purchase. I pledge to shop small at Big Top Candy Shop. Alan Foods. At Juno Baby Store. Make the pledge to shop small. Please! Shop small for Small Business Saturday. So how big was it? You know, 20% increase. Our sales were up about 30%. 166% increase from last year. In the end, it became a top 10 trending topic on Twitter. The second annual Small Business Saturday reached 2.7 million likes on Facebook, more than double the first year. Most importantly, 103 million Americans shop small, from California to Washington, D.C. This is Small Business Saturday, so we're, we're out here supporting small business. In just over a year, Small Business Saturday went from a day that didn't exist to a permanent fixture on the holiday shopping calendar. See you next year. Isn't this so cool? Isn't this so cool? It's a very simple idea. They never invented anything, right? Facebook's there, you know, Foursquare's there, but they divide them, bring them together so that it makes sense, right? And of course, why American Express? They probably got more customers signing up for their credit card franchise, right? I mean, if you have visited the um, United States, Visa is everywhere. American Express is maybe smaller than Visa. So they were probably trying to compete against Visa. They were trying to think something. And they found this issue in the state that during this holiday season after the, the, the Black Friday, every pop and mom shop is, is going down because the, the Best Buy targeted big sale big sale going on, and these small businesses are really not selling anything, okay, because of the, the big bargains going on in the big stores. So that was a social issue, and there was their business interest, and they tried to make them together, and then they came up with a very innovative solution. And they relied on the technology out there. They put them together, right? So think about it. Team, beh team behind this, there's a team like you. Five of you, right, from different backgrounds, thinking about how we should, how we might, right, how we might gain more customers, okay? And of course, they tried everything in the box, right? They've tried campaign, they tried to discount, and to, they tried everything, but not working. So they had to go out of the box, and they found the way out. And of course, this they never planned everything in, in front. They probably tried and you know tested and they modified and pivot sometimes and they pushed you know throughout the, the, the North America and then they got the, the, the words of the mouse probably and then they got its success. Right? So I think this is a very cool example that I don't know the, the truth. I don't know, maybe it was this one genius guy or woman just came up with this idea and then ta-da it happened. But I kind of want to believe that there was a team behind this, you know, sweating. And, you know, maybe someday laughing and doing brainstorming, someday drawing diagram, diagram like this, and 
implementing a small testing things and prototyping and making it happen. So I really want to encourage you, the world is full of innovation now. Yeah? And then many companies are intentionally trying to do this. And many individuals are intentionally going out of the box. Okay? So it's a, it's a wrap up that I want to show you. Intentional design process can help your team to think innovative. Okay? And I hope you kind of felt that. And of course, we haven't taught you everything. Okay? And we don't know everything. But we have found some hints, some clues, some best practices out there that can be, you know, that can be taught. Right? And you need to you know, pick up more. Right? And then, like I said, not knowing only this doesn't help you. Okay? It needs to be combined with your strong background information. Maybe you're an engineer. Maybe you're from biology. <coughs> maybe you're from business. Okay? You know many other things. This innovative thing it has to be combined with that. Okay? And you need to identify what to tackle innovatively or in a creative mode and what to tackle in a logical mode. Okay? All right? And you need two wheels to go straight. Okay? If you're on the one wheel, what happens? You circle, right? Yeah, you don't get anywhere. You may be drilling all downward. Right? You're not going forward. Okay? So you need this logical mode and creative or innovative mode to go straight forward and to further places. Okay? So, well, sorry it took, took us a very long time, but that's the end of the day. Thank you for your participation, and I really enjoyed it. I wish I could come back next year too. And now you're already part of our, uh, our franchise, okay? You have participated in this workshop, so now you know what, who we are, you know what we are trying to do. And so, um, yes, we are you know, asking some students to come to the interview. I uh, will send out email maybe in a couple of hours. It may take a little more time, but uh, we will send you an email. So if you get the email, it, will, it has a time on it for tomorrow's interview. Interview starts at 10, I think. Yes, I think it starts at 10, but I'll, it, it'll be on an email. So just um, res please respond to your email if you get it, okay? So please check your uh, phones or, or, or computer as, as often as possible. We will send it to you. It's January, not February. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's Jan. Yes. Tomorrow is January. Yes, I was a bit confused. Time lag, jet lag. Alright, so, and we will send you tonight and you'll come in tomorrow, okay? It's the first floor, we'll put up the sign or something. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. It'll be in the conference room, maybe. Yeah, okay. So, um, please, um, send, send us back me. Okay. And this is the material download URL. Um, you can take a photograph or whatever you need to do. Okay? So, oh, I want to let you go, but we will be here, so if you have a question, please. Please come. You can see photographs of you guys when you're sitting. So we need five more minutes. Okay. It can, yeah. So big smile, right? Yeah. Okay. And then so, you want a group photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After this, we're gonna take group photo because it was a it was a blast experience here. It was fun. So I want you to you know get their photos too. Okay. So before. You know, they'll, they'll they take their photos, but I'll just close my <laughs> workshop. Again, thank you very much for participating. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned. And I hope, yeah, I will see some of you tomorrow. All right, thank you very much. So let's just wait to the top, right? Victor, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I want to go ahead. Victor, Victor.